Oh, yeah.
Alan Chapman.
League Football Championship 2024 AC Milan Finals, the last round of Colombia's Open Competition, which is brought to you in partnership with the Italian club AC Milan. Now today, two very lucky winners will be taking home these trophies. And not only that, they will be off to Japan. They'll be booking their ticket to the World Finals as representatives of the Italian juggernauts. It's going to be a brilliant day, as it always is here. We have a fantastic lineup of matches with newcomers and veterans alike. So let's find out then who is headed to Japan. Starting now. be eight finalists competing here today but as we said only two can make it to Japan so let's find out who they will be right well as for now I am Summer Hunter I will be here with you throughout the day as we do discover who is booking their ticket to the world finals and alongside me as always well in company by my favorite dynamic duo when it comes to eFootball Harry Chan and Stuart Philip. Wesley, or should I say, Sir Stuart Philip Wesley. That sounds Wesser. far too regal, far too regal. <laughs> Not yet, maybe Well, listen, one day. let me tell you what, the trophies were here. All of a sudden they moved them closer to you. It could be because of that regality that you speak of, right? Do you, do you, no, they've just put me there to protect <laughs> them from all, everybody else. That was eyes. <laughs> so how are we, guys? It's been, what, 10 days since we last saw each other and back home in Barcelona now? That's right, yeah, back here in, in the studio. It's uh, fantastic to be here, as always. Another club event finals, and we've, we've done two so far. We've got a few more to come, but the time is running out. The opportunities to qualify for the world finals in Tokyo in the summer is running out for some of these players. So the I pressure is just mounting and mounting. I wonder how many times he's going to say that. <laughs> Time is running out, the clock is ticking. <laughs> What about for you, Wes? Yeah, been? How's no, the week? no rest for the wicked. We are right back at it with the AC Milan Club Finals. Again, it was great last week in terms of being in Munich. But now our attention has turned to the Italian giants and who's going to represent them in Tokyo in the summer. Well, I tell you what, I think I speak for probably just about everybody who's watching. They love your work, which is why we're putting you back to work well. so regularly, right? <laughs> Maybe, but I'm a bit worried that they keep moving the trophies away from me. That's the closest I'll ever come. Yeah, it didn't last very long. It was, what, 20 seconds you had it here? It was a and fun then... 20 seconds. It was a fun 20 seconds. Well, maybe by the end of the day, you'll be able to get your hands on it too. We'll see, we'll see. But anyway, let's talk about the competition format because as the guys have rightly said, we've already had two competitions thus far, FC Barcelona and FC Bayern München. And so for those of you who have been with us throughout the time, you already know what this is all about. But for those who are just joining us for the first time, we do want to give you a quick opportunity to understand the breakdown of how it all works, how we got here today with the AC Milan finals. Now, there have been three rounds of play that were played across February and March, and they've included four different regions across the planet. Let's quickly run you through what they are. You have Eastern Asia, Oceania and other areas, Western Asia, Europe and Africa together, and the Americas. So the winners and the representatives of each of these four regions, they are here today to compete for a place in Japan to represent AC Milan whenever it comes to the World Finals. Now, whenever we talk about the competition specifically today, what is the breakdown of the structure of play? Yeah, so we have two platforms, uh, console and mobile. We have two group stages separate for each platform. Uh, it's going to be a round robin style, so our four finalists from each platform will play each other once. Uh, three points for a win, one for a draw, zero for a loss. And then our top two group toppers from each platform will then go on to play the knockout final uh, later on today, which then obviously we need a winner, so extra time, penalties if needed, lots of drama. Uh, yeah, we had it in there. Munich, so why not have it again today? And then the winner of those games will represent AC Milan in the World Finals. Anything yeah. you want to add? Yeah, I was just going to say three of the four finals that you've seen through the last two club finals have gone the length. They've gone extra time and penalties. So fingers crossed, touch wood. We'll get that again today because I love me some drama in a penalty <laughs> shootout. Oh, yeah. Let's get it. Three for three, a hat trick of uh, penalty shootouts. 
Right, well, why don't we start off with a look then at our four finalists for the console mode of play. And we can have the guys here uh, talk us a little bit through in detail what you can expect from each one of these individuals as they prepare themselves for battle. And we've got Uzmakabil, someone you actually all know very well indeed. What did you tell me? Where's three-time world champion, three-time eFootball champion yeah, with Monaco. Checks, and checks notes. Um, yeah, pretty much <laughs> Sorry, everything you on the that's spot ever here, been won. But yeah, yeah. Basically, he's won it all, right? He, so. he has, except a uh, Barcelona club finals, if you can cast your minds back, folks. Lost a penalty shootout uh, final uh, against Footy for Seal mm. 10. So, yeah, he may be looking for a little bit of a revenge mission here today. Okay, so there you have it. You all know him quite well. He is representing Algeria, and he is the winner of Asia West region. Then we have from Thailand, Jan Sui, who is Asia East, Oceania, and others. He's also the regional winner for that area too. Then Kalahard, who hails from Mexico across the pond from us. He is the regional winner of the Americas. And last but not least, Mario is from Greece, Europe, and Africa, regional winner. So why don't we continue then with this conversation? We see uh, Jan Sui there just before his Maccabeel. Talk to me a little bit more about another representative of Thailand who actually won last week in Munich. Maybe he can also uh, bear the pride of uh, his country once more. I'd certainly be looking for inspiration from uh, from the Munich performance last week from Talon Sui. Uh, Jean Sui, this time around, a bit of a youngster. For me, going to be my first time experiencing his play. He's got obviously a tough group ahead of him, but I mean, why not? Our regional winner from Asia East, Oceania and other regions. Mm. It's a tough region. There's lots of uh, uh, footballing, e-footballing countries in there that are, I mean, they're difficult well, to beat popular, out. It's hugely popular, isn't so it? It's a hugely popular region. So he's uh, come up top trumps there. We'll see if he can win today. All right, talk me through Kalahar going to the opposite end of the planet now. The representative of Mexico. We had a Mexican last week. It didn't go quite so well for him, unfortunately, but perhaps his compatriot can fare a little bit better than today? Yeah, I mean, the, the key thing for me to know is, is that he comes from the community. So again, mm. he's kind of crossed Cross the divide almost between being a content creator and being uh, a esport competitor, which I personally love, folks. I love to see, you know, content creators coming in and showing their level. I mean, Kalahar to those of at home. Trades, if you will. Yeah, I mean, in terms of his level, when you watch his streams, you see how good he is. It's now going to be a case of whether you can transmit that form into this event here today. Okay, last but not least, we have from Greece, just down the road here in Europe, although it is the other side of Europe, really. <laughs> he was the winner for this region in Africa, Marios Harry. Yeah, Marios, uh, looking forward to seeing how he can perform today. Again, we spoke about uh, strong regions. There's strong regions across the board, but uh, Europe and uh, Africa, of course, two of the strongest, in my opinion, is where mm. the, obviously the eFootball Pro in seasons previous was based. You gotta be top dog in the region to come out and qualify for this type of event. So we'll see if the 17-year-old can can get it done here today. And another <laughs> promising youngster coming through the footballing ranks. A lot of young talent on offer today on display. Well, let's see if they uh, can in fact come out as top dog then, as it were. Let's run you through the uh, state of play in terms of the order of each one of these matches, and also let you know which ones will be available for your viewing pleasure. Uh, and of course, this is going to be based on what happened in round three. So. Up first, it's going to be Uzma Kabil against John Sui. Match two, Kala Hard against Marios. That will be followed by Uzma Kabil and Marios. That is on stream. Remember this concept. I will come back to it in just a minute. Match four, John Sui against Kala Hard, also on stream. That is followed by the fifth match, uh, fifth fixture of the day. Uzma Kabil against Kala Hard. And last but not least, it's John Sui up against Marios on stream. So what I mean by that is that anything that is on stream is going to be available for you to watch live on our platforms. So make sure that you stick around throughout the day and catch all of the action as it unfolds. So guys, what can we actually expect from these various matchups? Because as we said, there are some faces that we know very well indeed, but there are also some unknown quantities in the mix. There definitely are. Obviously, the big name is Ismacabeel. There's there's no beating around the bush there, Wes. But I'm looking elsewhere. I mean, Jean Sui from, from Thailand, we saw last week a, a fantastic mobile representative for Bayern. Could we see back-to-back -back Thailand regions being represented at the World Championships? I, I think it's a possibility today. Yeah, it's certainly possible. In terms of regions, you talk about Southeast Asia, in terms of Thailand, Indonesia, Japan, that kind of almost magic triangle that they have, and they seemingly just produce eSport competitors at an alarming rate. But then you also look at the other regions that are still there. Obviously, you've got Algeria and their fandom. You've got 
the Greek community and the Greek fandom, which goes with them, they love being an underdog. So the fact that we're not even speaking about Marios will suit him down to the ground. And then, of course, Kalahad, Mexico, again, <laughs> ferociously behind not only their football players, but the, behind their eSport competitors as well. OK, well, you did mention that you thought Europe and Africa was the strongest of the regions, right? Am I correct in saying that? At least one of the strongest. Well, we have actually two representatives that are from Morocco that are going to be participating in the mobile platform. So let's walk you through those four finalists as well. You have Obrushu from Brazil. He was the regional winner of the Americas. Maybe 7X, who hails from Morocco. Europe and Africa regional winner. Then from India, who I believe might be a first, actually, if I'm not wrong, here at an eFootball competition. Joy Boy, who is the regional winner of Asia West. Of course, don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% sure that that's the case. But then, last but not least, we have from Asia East and Oceania and others, the regional winner, who is A. Ermiki, also Moroccan. So, let's go through each one of these characters that we have who are going to be uh, plying their trade today. And let's start with Obrusha. Let's start with uh, the man from Brazil, Harry. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, he's known as one of the, the top champions in Brazilian eFootball. He'll be one of the stars to watch out for today when you look at pedigree in this type of competition. Yeah, sure, it's about what you can get done on the day. But having been there and done that in the past is a big, big oyster to your uh, bolstering to your aspirations to, to represent this Italian club at the World Finals. So he's going to be one to look out for. So perhaps he's got a very big leg up then, given that he has a bit of pedigree on home turf. Well, let's talk about maybe 7X. I, I'm trying to decipher what the maybe means. Maybe it means he wants to be a seven time <laughs> winner of something. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, in terms of, you know, to go on the flip side of that coin of, of experience, you have new players coming into this environment who can play with a bit of freedom. They don't understand what pressure means yet because this is one of the first times that they'll be in front of an audience like this, under pressure like this. And as a result, there is that little bit of kind of casting the shackles off and just saying, oh, I can just play how I normally play at home. Okay, well, let's talk about Joy Boy, someone looking to put a little bit of joy into <laughs> our day here from India. What do we know about him? Well, positive spin. I, I, I like that straight from the in-game name. Yeah, I will say it. India is a region definitely focused more towards the mobile side of esports. It's an emerging uh, industry at the moment in terms of like the the uh, discipline itself, very, very big in, in India. So I'm looking forward to seeing what Joy Boy can do. And, and eFootball is one of those games, one of the biggest esports on the mobile platform. I, I, I just got a good feeling about him. I don't know what it is. If it's, <laughs> oh, it's, it's the name. It's the name. It, it's, it, it could be the name. Or it could just, just be Harry's exceptional intuition. It could be. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, what about Waze? Air Mickey from Morocco. Yeah, Air Mickey, in terms of, as we can see from the, the graphic on the screen, got local trophies to his name. And as we've said so many times before, it's one thing being local, it's one thing being regional. It's a very different type of pressure when you get to international and when mm -hmm. you get to world level. Those well, this are quite literally different. is the biggest yeah. stage that there is, right? And that's, so. and that's and that's the kind of that will be the key separator here as to whether Air Mickey can kind of bring that level or whether it's a case of. Okay, I've maybe wilted under the pressure a little bit. Okay, well, hopefully for his sake, he won't wilt under I'm the pressure. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping not. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully nobody will, actually, and it will be a splendid day for everyone, uh, even though, of course, only two can actually win today. But let's go ahead and run you through the matchups in order for mobile mode of play. And, of course, once more, this is all based on what happened in round three. So up first, we have Obrushu against maybe 7X on stream. The second match is Joy Boy against Ermiki on stream. Then it will be followed by Obrushu, Eir Miki. Match four, maybe 7X against Joy Boy. Obrushu will take on Joy Boy on stream for the fifth match on offer. And then last but not least for you, it's maybe 7X against Eir Miki for an all Moroccan battle. Love it. So what can we expect then from these particular games? Well, we always say, Wes, I mean, from the two club finals we've seen so far, mobile is such a, a platform that is so fast paced that whoever comes out of the blocks fastest can often dictate the pace of the game. I'm looking at match number five, Bruges versus Joy Boy. I feel like that's one to look out for. You know, the two uh, Titans going head to head. I'm, I think that could be a spicy affair. Yeah, I think that's the one that really sticks out so far. And as, as we kind of alluded to, with uh, mobile esports becoming its own entity, it's the mm. first time that we've had it this season. There's a little bit of kind of a, almost what's in the magic box. We don't quite know what's going to happen. Uh, the beauty of it is if we get to find out because there is not that meant that much game film. There's not that much of kind of an experience of it. These players will have all of this for the first time. So 
we get to watch stars become superstars. Yeah. It's going to be great. Of course, we had it in the football open last year, but you're absolutely right. Club events, <laughs> completely different thing. I love how you just very ever so slightly kind of just corrected. Ah, it's okay. I'll, it's, I'll take it. I'll take it. It's all good. It's all good. It's all in the name of love here. We're amongst family and friends. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not. Yourself. Hey, okay, fine. <laughs> fine. I won't take that personally. Anyway, let's go ahead and show you the exact listing of all of the matches that will be available on screen. Sorry, on, yes, on stream is what I want to say. Rather, that will be available on our platform for you to watch one after the other. It's going to be Obrusho against maybe 7X on mobile. Then we'll have a double header on mobile with Joyboy against Ermiki. Then we'll switch over to console for match three. Use Marco Biel against Marios. Then another game for you on console. John Sui versus Kalahard. We're back to mobile for the fifth match of the group stage, Obrushu against Joy Boy. And last but not least, it's going to be back over to console once more for match six, John Sui up against Marios. Now, it's really interesting because we have the Brazilian who clearly has won significantly in Brazil, but both of them are relative newcomers here to the eFootball universe in terms of this stage. So what might we expect to see in this opening match of the day? It's a very good question because, like you say, both kind of relative newcomers. We do have the Americas going up against Europe and Africa. Oftentimes, that can lead to some some open gameplay with the mobile platform as well. With it being the first two games, I'm expecting lots of action, lots of fast-paced gameplay. Looking forward to seeing how many chances are created by this super, super stacked and talented mobile gamers. Yeah, absolutely. And again, we talk about chances being created. There are very few chances that are created with the mobile game purely because it ticks down a lot quicker than it does with the console game. So expect a kind of almost gun ho action from the off mm. is what I would probably suggest of what we're going to see here. Out the traps. Straight out the traps. We want to be the it. first one on the board. And that's what I think that all of these players will look to do. Okay, fiery, feisty, intense. I love it. Well, just before, however, we leave you to watch these uh, matches, we do want to give you a very friendly reminder to collect your 500 eFootball points. How you can do this is by clicking in the viewing campaign banner, which is now displayed in game. And make sure that you do not miss out on this opportunity. Collect those 500 eFootball points because we all know that you want them and it's a wonderful thing to have. And beyond that, make sure that you stay up to date with all of the latest news and everything as it relates to the competition and, of course, to eFootball, the game itself. You can do so by staying up to date across all of our social media platforms as well. So let's go ahead and get to it then, shall we, gang? We can uh, get very excited. Drum roll, please. Thank you, thank you. And we can welcome our very first opponents for the day. It's going to be Brazil's Obrushu against Morocco's Maybe 7X. Yes, thank you very much, Semra. We are moments away, Wes, from kicking off the AC Milan club event finals. By the end of the day, we will have two champions virtually lifting those two trophies on your left. We start, of course, on the mobile platform, two matches back to back, the first of which Rougeau taking on maybe seven. We love the mobile platform. We, we spoke about it briefly in, in the pre-match. Of course, the club event finals now featuring mobile tournaments as well. As a separate platform from the console is so, so fun because we do get to see that fast paced action. Yeah, I think sometimes it can be a little bit of a cagey affair on console. Sometimes it can be a little bit too guarded, a little bit too... A bit tactical. Yeah, a bit tactical. Whereas with this, it's a little bit more a case of how quickly can you respond to your opponent? And uh, Semra and yourself has pointed out, how quickly can your thumbs move? Absolutely right. Well, we are now underway. Brujo is in the home strip. And with the blue icon, we will see maybe seven. With the early chance here in the away strip, all white for the man from Morocco. And we're just six minutes on the clock so far, Wes. We spoke about it. Sometimes chances on mobile can come few and far between. It's going to be very, very important that you take your chances when they come. Here comes Brujo. And he forces a corner out of maybe seven. 
Yeah, absolutely. You're going to have to take those chances early. When they present themselves, you are going to have to take them early. Benacer looks to line up this corner. Plays it in short here to Florenzi. Florenzi chips it across the box, looking for Tamori. And it's up into the air, and it's cleared away by Chukwezi. It's Musa to recover it. Musa to Benacer. Pulisic. It's fallen to Chukwezi. Florenzi with the driven cross into the box. And Dill will clear it away. Chukwezi. Very good territory there from Brujo. And he is actually going to retain possession here in the opening 15. Good defensive work from maybe, and we'll see if this break can maybe happen for him here. Around 15 minutes gone in the first half. Chukwezi on the far side. Has a man to beat, and he's done so brilliantly so far. Where is the cross, though? Back to Kalulu across the floor. Maybe a missed input there. And maybe Seven now has to try and start again. Back to Adli Liao with a double touch, almost fashioning a chance there for the Moroccan. Mulisic finds the feet of Giroud, and that's a really good chance now for Chukwezi. He's in here for Brujo! Opening goal in the 25th minute of the match. Our America's regional winner scores the first goal of the Milan club event finals. 1-0. Yeah, it was really good counter-attack. It came from a, a double-touch giveaway on his in his own box. Uh, from his opponent and then allowed that breakaway. Uh, Olivier Giroud is almost the lighthouse that you look for in this AC Milan side. And he allowed that that physicality to just hold up the ball, slots in Chukwezi, gives a keeper a little bit of a look. You'll see it again here. And Chukwezi just making his way into the box, shows Magnan the wrong way. Just that little bit of movement from the goalkeeper was enough for Chukwezi to have an opening. And Rougeau has a 1-0 lead. As we said, so important at this level to take the chances when they come. Very good from Brujo, and he's attacking here again. Following that goal. Benacer inside, but well, the Benacer on the side of maybe. Was able to dispossess, and this will be a throw in here. Where's half an hour gone? There's confirmation. The Brazilian opens our scoring. Yeah, again, it, it, again, it's it's vital to get your nose in front here in this mobile uh, platform. As Chuck Wesley wins the ball back, gets it into Giroud. Giroud here will be able to lay it off, but Kalulu quickly across. And now. Maybe started off the half quite strongly, but it's just little mistakes like that that's been costing him so far about 10 minutes till half time and he'll well he'll maybe have a chance to counter here looking for Adley cannot be found with the pass Brujo's looked good so far looking for heads it down to Adley Liao now for maybe oh but that's a very bad Giveaway of possession. Pulisic can maybe roll onto this. Has Benacer for company. And I tell you what, the latter does so well. Almost on the stroke of half time. And that might just enable the last chance of the half here for maybe seven. But Tamori across and half time. Brujo enters with the lead. Maybe seven had a couple of chances, but realistically. Most of the possession and the territory where it's went the way of the Brazilian Brujo. Yeah, it certainly feels as though the Brujo, although the stats don't necessarily suggest it, but he certainly seems to be the one asking the questions of Maybe's back line. He's asking those, you know, can you handle Giroud? Can you lock down Pulisic? And it was, again, as you quite rightly said, really good tracking back there by Benesse and by Maybe to make sure that he only goes in one goal down. And, there's still opportunities here. Yeah, there are, and it's going to come straight away for maybe after the kickoff from half time. And the second half starts with a bang. Maybe seven with the equalizer. Straight away, a dream start to the second half. And the 17 year old equalizes on one of the biggest stages of his career so far. It's exactly what he needed to get himself back into the game. There's no Okafor who got forward. You can see there, it's as simple as you like. He's getting through the back line. And again, it's that one 
almost missed tackle. And that input just allows Okafor's pace to get the better of the defender. And it's a cool finish in the box for 1-1. Very cool finish by our Europe and Africa regional winner. Maybe 7x. Of course, if you're just joining us, it is Brujo from Brazil in the home strip. It's maybe 7, and I tell you what, the latter has a chance for another attack here as the cross comes in. Maybe 7 in that all-white Milan strip. Spoke about it in the pregame, so important to take your chances when they appear on this platform and Okafor can maybe try and feed Lee out. Brujo looks a little shell-shocked to start the second half after taking that early lead. Into the feet of Giroud for him now though. Chukwezi in the final third. Cannot quite get the connection he's looking for. Hernandez. Inside to Pulisic and Teo Nandez can maybe cross that one in, but Manjan is very strong in that Milan goal. Yeah, you can see as well, top right hand side of your uh, screen there, you can see a Paul queued. Interesting to see what tactical changes are made by these two. It is entering that kind of golden period of time between 60 and 75 minutes where Super Sub becomes more of an important part and timing your substitutions and certainly picking out the right players to bring in. Looks like a completely rejuvenated front line here for, for Brujo. As you said, such an important time when you bring on those subs, fresh legs, especially going up against more fatigued defenders on the other side. Can really make the difference in this type of competition at this type of time frame. And and it's a round-robin group stage. It's the old adage, isn't it, Wes? We used to say it so much throughout the previous seasons. You don't get a chance to get these points back. So, honours even right now. We'll see if the points are shared come the end of the 90. Brujo in possession. Out to Florenzi. Four with Florenzi on the overlap, stunning cross, and again it's Manyan with the strong hands. This time for maybe seven. Yeah, Giroud just knocked that down then brilliantly. Musa passes intercepted. It's interesting to see as well in terms of the changes. Rafael Lair brought off the bench as opposed to being a starter. And here he is with the ball. Fresh pace brought in. Hernandez cannot. Get the ball in before it crosses the byline. But yeah, very pacey player, especially with that fresh stamina bar, Wes. It's a very good point you bring up. Of course, no doubt we'll be seeing that throughout today. Who chooses to utilize Liao and in what form? That's a ball given away, though, by maybe. And here is Liao. Luka Jovic with the strike. Oh, he's tucked in in the bottom corner. What a strike, controlled by Brujo, the Brazilian, back in front. Second time in the game he's taken the lead, it's now 2-1. Three of those substitutes of the five that he brought on combined there. Loftus-Cheek wins it back in midfield, plays it out wide to Rafael Leo. Jovic has time, has space, turns and navigates it past the goalkeeper. Wonderful finish from Jovic and again, the awareness, we'll just see it again here. Manages to get it out of his feet, and the defender tries to cover it. I believe it even goes to the defender's legs, and as a result, Rougeau finds himself back in front. Back in front, and what a vital time as well, entering the final 10 in-game minutes. Is there a response from maybe? But the Milan squad, the AC Milan squad, so, so deep. In terms of squad depth, you can bring on the likes of Loftus Cheek, Jovic, Liao, and they can really make a difference. And for Brujo, he has possession and vitally the lead in this opening group stage match. Maybe a last chance here for maybe Loftus Cheek. 
Kalulu though with a strong interception and he hoofs it upfield. That's a great header on as well and with only three minutes added on. Surely that's the game now. Okafor, far side. Luka Jovic, the goal scorer. Presumably the winning goal scorer. And there it is, Wes. Great show of resiliency to take all three points for Brujo. A great, great opening for the Brazilian. Well, we promised goals. We promised goals. Yeah. We, prom we promised attacking intent, folks. <laughs> uh, and I think we, I think we royally saw it there. I mean, again, the, the substitute played their part. They made that difference. Yeah. You know, seeing Rafa Leo, seeing uh, Ruben Loftus Cheek, seeing Luka Jovic all off the bench and combined vitally for that winning goal. Uh, again, superb work from Brujo. Yeah, we can see it here from uh, some of the highlights. Of course, started uh, really, really strongly. Had a couple of chances in the in the opening ten, but really was that. 25th minute goal we saw from Brujo that, that kind of set the pace, set the tempo and set his, I want to say, intentions going throughout the, the tournament here today about how he intends to proceed. Very, very clinical finish. Yeah, it was. I mean, again, you, you talk about composure in vital moments. Again, it, you know, it's hard enough when you have a controller in your hand, yeah. let alone when you have your thumbs on a mobile to, do, to, to have that level of composure. But again, it's really good work for the equaliser from maybe seven. Again, it almost directly from kickoff. And again, it was just one missed input of a tackle when it shouldn't really have been used and allowed the door to be swung open on Brujo's defence. Swung open it was, and of course that was uh, the goal that saw the equaliser for maybe only 17 years old, our Europe and Africa winner, uh, regional winner to make it to this stage. The question is, after conceding so late on, oh, I think it was about the 79th, 80th minute, is that going to knock his confidence going forward, Wes? Because such a young age, you, you now essentially are in a must-win scenario for his next two group stage games in order to make that knockout stage. No, I think it'll be a little bit of a lesson for him in the sense of once you get that goal back, mm. he's maybe calm down and maybe just try and nullify a little bit those substitutions. It is difficult when somebody brings on a complete different attacking line yeah. change. But at some point, you have to nullify it. But if you're going to utilize Rafaleo off the bench, you're going to utilize Jovic off the bench, you're going to give anybody problems. You're absolutely right. 2-1, Semra. What a game to start today. What a game indeed to start. But hey, you've got to take risks every now and again, right? It's calculated risks, of course. Well, um, why don't we take stock a little bit as to how things are going so far in the day? Because we do have two matches that are played simultaneously on mobile and console as well. So just to give you an idea, we have Obrusho obviously picking up those three points against maybe 7X. Um, well, actually, these are just the mobile games, so we'll have to take a look at console in just a minute. But notwithstanding then, um, obviously, it's going to be an interesting one because we still have another game in mobile that will be available for you to watch live, which is Joy Boy against Air Miki. So talk me through this one a little bit, One, I know that Harry was feeling a little bit good about uh, the Indian, given the wonderful joy that he brings to his name. But Air Miki, another interesting contender from Morocco. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I got my eyes on Joy Boy today. I know I don't like to pick favorites, you know me, <laughs> usually on the fence, Wes, but I will say India really well last week. It Let actually me tell did. You. <laughs> two for two winners. I'm quite surprised about that. I'm kind of worried for our jobs, Wes. But <laughs> I will say, just, just have a good feeling. India as a region has obviously such a big population and from that has a greater talent pool to, to uh, choose from than other countries. So, in theory, going by that logic, we should see a very strong Indian representative here. All right. Anything you want to add to that? I think styles, as the old saying goes, styles make fights. Yeah. Uh, or at least not physical fight in this instance, folks. Just one Virtual on the mobile. Fights. Just one on the mobile. <laughs> um, and again, as we said, we, we, we talk a lot about the uh, kind of the time ticking down, things like that. I think we're going to have a very interesting game between these two. Mm. Right. Well, here we go. Now we've got the console results up behind me. We have got Uzma Kabil. Again, no real surprise given the pedigree that he brings to this competition. Three points, although it was a marginal win, just one nil over uh, the man from Thailand, Jan Sui. Yeah, that's uh, an uncharacteristic result, I would say, from Usman Kabil. It's not often you see him kind of grind out games to that one nil no, scoreline. He usually so he scores quite a fair amount, doesn't he? Definitely tries to. So I wonder whether or not how much of that would be Jean Sui coming from, uh, obviously, our Asia, Eastern Oceania and others region, whether or not that 
matchup just was something that Ismaq Abil wasn't prepared for. Mm. Maybe that type of gameplay is maybe his Achilles heel. We Ooh. don't know. We'll go and see, obviously, later on that, that group stage. Perhaps but, um, stoner competition than he actually uh, potentially, expected. Potentially so, yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, move right along then and continue with our mobile style of play, then mode of play. And we've got coming your way now. It's going to be Joy Boy against Ayer Miki. A big thank you to Semra as always. I'm not sure I'll quite be able to pronounce Ermiki as well as she does. I'm, I'm not great. I know it's my job, Wes, but my pronunciation is not fantastic. But we do have Ermiki from Morocco, 22 years old. Has won many local trophies, but this is a big step up for him here. Going up against Joy Boy, our India representative from the Asia West region. He won that region to qualify to this tournament. A newcomer to the eFootball scene, but one thing that impressed me from his information, I got to ask him a couple of questions. He wants to learn new tricks from his opponents, and that I think can be one of the most dangerous opponents to come up against because he'll be constantly downloading what you're doing and thinking how he can counter it. Yeah, that is, if, if you were to read that on anybody's bio, that is always one to be very, very careful of because Again, you're only going to get a stronger opponent the more that they play. So you would like to think that he will potentially pick up the hints and tips and tricks that he's looking for going through the tournament. Um, and again, of course, a, a small word on your pronunciations, both the chat and the audience, we forgive you. We forgive you. If you get any wrong, we forgive you. Okay. <laughs> but in terms, of, in terms of what we've got here, though, I, like I said, I'm, I'm very eager to see how these two styles mesh against one another. Yeah, absolutely. Could not agree more. We will have Joy Boy in the eight-seat Milan home strip, taking on Eremiki in the all-changed white strip. It's Joy Boy with possession first. As we said throughout today, throughout mobile and console, it's going to be so fascinating to see where the change in personnel comes from, where the tactical switches happen. Who decides to use whom as a super sub? Do they hold back on some of the more offensive weapons that AC Milan have at their disposal? Or do you go gung-ho? Do you try and get that lead early on and try and defend it? Well, this is interesting that you've just seen a, a different names pop up on your screen there. Pabega uh, didn't see at all in the first game from obviously from two different players, but you can see that there are little nuanced differences lay out from the start. Here comes Okafor for Eremiki. Adley's arriving, but Tamori. One of those key pieces in defence for AC Milan. You see him as a staple, no doubt, as all of these regional winners try and qualify for the chance to represent AC Milan at the World Finals in Tokyo later this summer. there for Joy Boy. Interception wins the ball back and now the attack is progressing over on that far side. Calabria for the Moroccan Ermiki. Able to step in and we say it so, so often, Wes. Of course, this is our first full season being able to follow the mobile gameplay. You have to take those chances when they appear. I think you will hear us often ask how much will that cost these players when a good chance presents itself you have to take it there's potentially one building here but Ben Serra is able to step in and intercept yeah absolutely spot on is that the blink and you'll miss it style of gameplay within mobile as Okafor finds Pabega but you have to wonder just how much or how costly these chances are going to be if and when they present themselves if they're not taken Teo Hernandez. He's coming across looking for the head of Giroud. Of course, that Frenchman very, very prolific with his head. Aiming for him once more. There's a couple of white shirts over on this far side as Adley 
There's a bit of green grass to run into. Manover on his right, but chooses to go left to Bobega. It's been a fairly open first half. This ball has stayed in play for the majority of it, but very few clear-cut chances to speak of thus far. Is that about to change as Pulisic is tackled by Tamori, and that will be a corner towards Joy Boy. A bit of a chance here towards the end of the first half. Who is his target as we await the in-swinger from Adley? Short option is there as well, decides to go in the box towards Giroud at the front post. He's been dispossessed though and the referee's assistant has held up the number zero. So it's all of zeros in this first half. Nil nil. It's good to say zeros everywhere, shots on target, offside, you name it, that they are everywhere. And it is it's been a testing half for both of these players because they've not really had a lot of opportunities. And as such that and the, with the ball being in play for as long as it has been, that clock just ticked down ferociously uh, to the point now where, as we said, blink and you miss it. That's the first half that's gone for these two players. As we can see from Joy Boy's screen, wanting to try a bit of a switch up in formation here. And I tell you what, I don't mind that at this stage of the game. As you said, there's been no shots, no chances. The ball's been in play plenty, so you've had a good half of football to try and fashion those chances yeah just something interesting to note here you mentioned about changes in shape I'll chance my hand here is that if Giroud isn't taken off there could be that diagonal ball on that we've seen so often to maybe almost route one knock it down from the big man Olivier Giroud into the path of Rafael Leal it's one of the more fascinating aspects of these club event finals as we are now underway in the second half. It's who has done their homework and who really searches for that affinity with their club and their playing style? You have to play to your strengths. And as you said, where's that diagonal is something we've seen in seasons past to be very, very prolific for this Milan club, Calabria. Dispossessed on that far side. Musa are able to win it back for Joy Boy. Now kicking from right to left in the Milan home strip. And I tell you what, the fans who've bought the tickets on that far side have really gotten their money's worth here because very little coming towards the camera here. Yeah, you can see that players have their preferences on who they attack with and what, what route they would like to go to goal. Into the feet of Okafor. Eremiki with a chance to roll forward. Adli here in the box and is able to poke it. Past the near post and into the goal. The Moroccan, who's won many local trophies is stepping up now at the next level, 1-0. Again, it's well worked in that middle, just those one-twos and those short passes. See there, one back here, one touch, one pass, one touch, one pass. It was two-touch football. It was a brilliant finish there by Adley. He mentioned then about, about phone calls, He's probably telling everybody, to leave me alone, I am playing in a club finals here. <laughs> Yeah, we were just discussing in rehearsals, obviously, with the mobile platform. Do you have a separate phone just to play eFootball? So you don't have your relatives texting you and asking you what's for dinner. <laughs> yeah, most certainly. You wouldn't want to be asked that whilst you've just got one nil up here. You wouldn't want that. You'd be like, Mum, leave me alone. I, I'm on flight mode. I am busy. Of course, all our club event finalists will be locked in at this stage of the competition. And now, for Joy Boy, the task is on. Said he wants to learn new tricks from his opponents and day-to-day -day applies his trade as a software developer. So the question is, can he fix this bug? Is he able to Substitution download the data from his opponent Number and 11. try and counter? 
certainly will have to. I, I'm very much a big fan of changing the spine of your team as opposed to the kind of the, the five substitution wave we saw in the first game. Much more of a fan of having a fresh defender on to combat any attackers that might have fresh legs. Looking forward to Liao, Musa into the box here. And Liao on the turn! Oh, what a hit! What a hit! It's the immediate reply from Joy Boy. And it's set up the rest of our second half here for absolute drama. 1-1, what a finish by a, the 25-year-old Indian. That is a wonderful finish. I mean, the keeper was almost rooted to the spot. You can see Magnan going, do I need to die for this? Uh, as you see there, completely... I, you could have stuck two Magnans in there. He's not saving that one. That is a brilliant finish from Joy Boy. And right, as he said, time on. When substitutions have happened, things can be changed very quickly. That spine of the team change that you rightly pointed out, Wes, has been the right move so far for Joy Boy. There's a cross for Eremiki. This is perfectly poised. Final 15 in-game minutes, plus stoppage time, of course. To see if we will be sharing the points or if there is a winner here in our group stage. Throw into Elmiki and the White Milan strip. And unsurprisingly, there's more changes here. Vital, vital passage of play here coming up for both sides. Yeah, and the, these are the moments that will really define your your stays here in these club finals. Is every pause is critical. Every change, every small little chess move can be analysed and overanalysed, and it can really be picked apart as to whether it's the right call. We're only going to know that by the end of today's proceedings as to whether the calls of the group stage are the right ones to get yourself through to those grand finals. Substitution. Of course, goes without saying. A draw far more useful to you in a round-robin group stage than a loss. But something tells me the mentality of both men here. I want those three points, and there's a break on three on two momentarily for Joy Boy. Liao furthest up, it's into his feet now. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, far side. That's Tomori for company. The cross, oh, not sure if that's who Joy Boy was intending to try and target, but all of a sudden this game has opened up. Pulisic for Ermiki. Into the feet of Hernandez now. Can he get the cross in? He can, but Magnan with strong hands. Rafael Leao, Okafor, three minutes added on to Leao, but cannot get the first touch there. This header will be crucial. Off to Sheik, is dispossessed by Benacer, but that will be the end of our second mobile group stage match between Joy Boy and Eremiki. 1-1, Wes, but plenty of action to speak about there were so many chances so many goals but in the end the points are shared yeah and it, it really showed that when those substitutions kicked in that's when the game opened up for both teams yeah yeah you know, we saw the goal happen what felt like maybe two or three minutes after uh, those substitutions came in and you could really sense the kind of the urgency in that final pause period that we saw that, that as soon as that last pause about 10 in game minutes they had left you could really sense the urgency. It was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. It, was but almost, it couldn't be split. Almost like two boxers swinging for the fences at the end. I was going to say like a basketball game, but yeah. I mean, that works too, right? <laughs> I mean, there's a ball in that sport, so it's probably the more accurate. <laughs> it probably is so <laughs> more accurate simile. Well, we could try throwing a ball into a boxing ring and just see what happens. It's a new sport yeah, idea. Yeah, there is a new sport idea, you know. <laughs> right, so let's take a look at uh, some of the highlights then. Some of the standout moments from this game, yes. beginning with this lovely goal. That was goal. from Eremiki, of course, where it's a, a great finish, as yeah, you pointed it was, out. Yeah, it was the two-touch passing that, that really opened up that lane. It was just, it was very, very quick on responses. And again, talk about responses. 
having, again, the wherewithal to kind of shield off the defender, turn yourself around, and just swung a leg at it from Rafael Leao, but it was what almost hits the side netting before it goes to the back of it. And those types of finishes, you, you just don't save. Yeah, you, you don't save those. And I'll tell you what, Samra, by the end of it, I was almost a little disappointed we saw the points shared because both players really had great chances. They gave it a good go and were trying to win the game. So a point is, uh, I would say, in a draw is a fair result on the grand scheme of things. But for me personally, <laughs> I wanted to see a winner and I feel like both, both players deserve a winner. I think if anything, at least it goes to show that there's still plenty more to come from both of them. Yeah. Because if this is how they've started off the day, then I would say watch this space. So yes, maybe as you rightly say, a share of the spoils is probably the fairest of the results. Yeah. But still, it might be a nice little appetite weather for what could be coming uh, from both of these going forward. Right, well, let's take a quick look once more at how the group is shaping up and who has what points on the board. We obviously know what happened in game one. Obrusho is the only player so far for the mobile mode that has collected all three points, maybe 7x from Morocco. Dead laughs in the group with no points on the board, but Joy Boy and fellow Moroccan Ermiki is also uh, right there in the thick of it with one point apiece. So we'll see what happens then with Obrusho leading the way, coming up against Ermiki next with one point there. But uh, I think we can actually move on then to the console mode and kind of get ready for that one because we haven't yet had the opportunity to actually watch one of these console games as of yet. Not yet, and it's going to be something that I think a lot of people are going to be interested to keep an eye on, of course. How is this Maccabeel going to do? How are these these players accompanying him in the group are going to do? And I mean, we can see from some of the results already, is Maccabeel starting well, but not his free scoring form that we've mm. come to associate him with. On the other side, a very close game between Kalahard and, and Marios. So you're looking at Kalahard and as Maccabeel as mm. the two front runners in that group now. Well, speaking of, why don't we actually take a look at the league table then? Uh, we can see kind of a more uh, clear cut look at who is sitting where in each position. Well, I guess we don't have it as of yet, but I mean, it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Because it is Maccabeel and Kalahard mm. will be leading the way with three points each and then trailing behind them is John Sweet and Mariusz with plenty of work to do. Well, there you have it. This is the uh, actual breakdown then. But you know what? We've got Uz Maccabeel coming up next against Mariusz, a relative newcomer here. And it's going to be fascinating to see how this one works out because obviously we know that Uz Maccabeel can take a sledgehammer and just basically brush aside just about any opponent. Mariusz, though, in some ways, being the underdog, it may actually give him a bit of an advantage here. It may, but definitely not the ideal conditions to go up <laughs> against this Maccabeele, knowing that it's a match that you absolutely have to well, win. Well, having really. lost your first match as well having, doesn't help either. But, exactly. Uh, but maybe in some ways it's almost like, well, at this point, I don't have much to lose, right? That's one way to look in at it ways. definitely is I mean, obviously there's a lot to lose <laughs> but i hope you understand what i'm I trying to say here. definitely <laughs> understand it's about which side of the coin you're entering you know flipping mm. do you do you flip with it heads and you're like yeah you know what i've got nothing to lose i've got a positive outlook or it's the tails like oh no i i have to win this now this is exactly. if i don't win this or i don't get a point I'm then out. i'm out exactly yeah that 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 is the the uh i wouldn't say the million dollar question but it certainly is a question that is going to be posed in this game it is very much a uh, a Goliath versus David, it, especially looking at the table as it stands, and of mm. course the the back catalogue we know versus Maccabeel. and like I say, Marios is no slouch. Mm. Uh, you know, in terms of like, as we said, the Greek community and the Greek competitors, there's a lineage there, but it's not to the level of what you've seen from us Maccabeel. So I think there's there's still something there to be had, and yeah, much like when you said you had a gut feeling. Uh, you know, this game's going to be very, very good. I've just, it's something in the water about this game. Okay, well, listen, for Uzma, it's obviously been another day in the office for him, pretty standard, collecting three points as uh, regularly as he typically does. But will he have a bit of a, a trouble then against Mariosh in this David versus Goliath battle? Well, let's find out then, shall we? Enjoy. David versus Goliath, as Semra put it. We are no frills, no spills, straight away underway. With Uzmakabil taking on Marios, and there's a real chance here early on. Barely even a chance to introduce our players. It's Uzmakabil in the white strip, and I tell you what, it's Marios. 
the Greek opening the scoring in, what is that, the fourth minute of the match, Wes? Yeah, it's a, it's a stunning start. We didn't even get to kick off when we see the goal. Just double-checking our graphics here. It is one goal to nil for Mario. What a start. He's got everyone off guard. As we said, you, you don't underestimate the Greeks. Underestimate them at your absolute peril. And he's showing us why against Uzmak Abil, of course. We've introduced him plenty of times, but Marios, 17 years old, our Europe and Africa regional winner. Scoring that in the fourth minute of the match with Rafael Leao. Yeah, what a start that is for Marios. He's got to be careful, of obviously, the counter attacks coming his way from his Maccabeel, but it's a brilliant start for the Greek. Absolutely it is. We have Uzmak Abil with the blue icon and white strip attacking right to left. Now with Musa. Giroud just outside the box trying to force the issue, but defensively Marios survives for now. But Uzmak Abil comes again as Giroud with the header! This could be a fun one, Wes. Two goals in the opening 10 minutes. Uzmak Abil, like clockwork, back on level terms. 1-1. One, one. It's almost like they're playing at a mobile pace in the console game. This could be any type of score you can imagine. Again, really good work from Uzmak Abil to find that ball into the box. You'll see it come back here again, flicked over the top to his favourite player in Olivier Giroud. Uh, Marios tried to read it with the, the manual goalkeeping, but it just went to the wrong side. Yeah, that it did. The header from Giroud. I think we asked Osmak Abiel about his favourite player, and of course we asked the same questions to all the representatives here, and they all say our oh, favourite player to use is Liao, or it's you know Teo Hernandez, or someone like that. And Osmak Abiel says, Olivier Giroud, give, give me a strong target man up top to header it towards goal and not balls onto and he's proven his game plan right there confirmation latest goal scored by the three-time world champion and he's coming forward again with Chukwezi. it's a man after my own heart using a big target man like Olivier Giroud certainly is in this type of environment this type of game mode as a player you can call on now, where is the Response here from Mariosh. Of course, it's all well and good to opening the scoring and taking the lead, but as we said before, having lost his opening game in this group, finds himself in a situation where he needs some kind of result against Uzmak Abiel, and those eagle-eyed viewers will, of course, recognise the face of Luis Maccabeel, both from seasons previous and, of course, the FC Barcelona club event finals a couple of months ago. But all the way to the knockout stage final and was one game away from representing the Catalan club at the world finals, but was bested on penalties. We'll be looking to try and go one better here today. As Marios coming forward here inside the box now. Is there a chance? And he regains the lead. Well, I asked the question, and Marios just provided the answer. How do you get back in front against a three time world champ just like that? You fight fire with fire, is what you do against the next three time world champion. OK, it's good. It's patient build-up in that defensive zone there. Again, cuts out a phase almost by chipping it into a centre midfielder. And then just, uh, again, taking a touch in the in the direction that your opponent isn't expecting. Normally, when that ball gets played there, you're thinking he's going to roll around and try and hit it with his right foot. It takes a touch back where it came from and opened up the space. Wonderful goal from Marios. It's a wonderful goal and great utilisation as well of Rafael Leao. Just 17 years old is Marios, won the Europe and Africa region to make it to this stage of the competition. 
Nice ball though from his Maccabeel. Here's Trukwesi. Giroud in the box with the left foot. And Wes, you said it. A mobile pl pace here on the console platform. It's four goals in, what, 25 in-game minutes? 27 in-game minutes. This is a crazy pace being set by these two. And what a great finish, my add, as well. Olivier Giroud on his left foot. Again, great play to uh, get Chukwesi in. And again, realised where he was. Giroud with a first-time strike right into the bottom corner. No chance left there for the goalkeeper. we will see it again here. Brilliant angle. And the level of e-football being shown. We always harp on about, oh, when your chances appear, you just you have to make sure you're taking them. Don't need to tell these two twice. That's Maccabeel 2, Mariosh 2, here in the first half. That's what you can expect from two players who <laughs> hail from regions and countries that have lineages. Of course, you've seen those Maccabeel represent France in stages. Of course, you've got you know, Cams, Lotfi, Kilsu, Nexa. All of those guys will certainly have kind of sharpened the steel of him. And then, of course, on Greece's side of things, you've got Lazar the Greek, Panos Bull. You've got, uh, you know, in terms of if you think of an older vintage, you've got Stav Attack, who we've seen in previous. We've got Crazy Flash that was playing when I was around. The, there's a, a kind of a new wave of players coming through in Greece, and that's kind of what we're seeing here as well. 17 years old, Marius, kind of showing almost maturity beyond his years at this point. Yeah, and despite his age, has some accolades to back it up as well. Double touch can't make it around the defence of Uzmakabil. Into the feet of Liao now, who can bring this forward, shielding the ball quite well. Top five at the IESF World Championships in 2023. Marios, so has experience in top level competitions, but it's a tough task. Coming up against this caliber of opponent this early on, and it's Maccabeel looking for take to take the lead for the first time in this match. Won his first group game, one goal to nil against Jun Sui of Thailand elsewhere. So is Maccabeel looking the healthier of the two men on your screen? So far here in the group stages, half-time approaching. Yeah, feels like we, we almost need a rest from watching this because it's been, it's been a frenetic pace between these two players already. And it doesn't look like either one of them wants to give their opponent a rest here. They're giving them th something to think about with every single pass. Crossed in by Uzma Kabil, but too close to Mike Manyan and the Milan goalkeeper, a general in the air, and Marios, well, had too many white shirts to beat in the end. Is there one last attack for Uzma Kabil? They are trying to complete the one-two, but that won't happen, and, well, the referee has said... Let's keep playing here because there's a potential chance for Marios. Kalulu for Uzmakabil will spell the end of the first half. An action packed first half where so many chances, so many of them converted 2 2. And breathe, everybody. And breathe. <laughs> it has been restless between these two players. And interestingly, one of the things I've picked up here is the almost willingness to cut out midfield. The willingness, is, the, the willingness, essentially, is to go defence to striker rather than rather than look to try and play through each other's midfield. And, and as a result, it immediately puts pressure onto a backline if you go that direct. And, of course, second balls is where your centre midfield, as you can see here, they're trying to build up in that kind of fashion where you get four or five runners. And, and of course, it can be chaos because as a, control, as a console player, and even as a mobile player, you can only control one player at a time. Absolutely right, Wes, and the second half will, of course, see the two sides switch. It's Mario still in the home strip, but now attacking right to left. 
That's one thing that we've seen from Ismaka Beal in seasons previous in iterations of this competition. I'll come back to my point as the man himself is about to top one home. It's Liao again. Not for the first time today, but the first time for Ismaka Beal. And the first time he takes the lead in this game. Three goals for the three-time world champ. It's a bit weird to say that he's scored three goals in a game, and that's the first time he's taken the lead. That is very un Uzma like um, But again, you saw the, again, the movement. Again, Rafael Lauer breaking away from defenders, manages to just tuck that one home. And it gives the man representing Algeria the lead here. Neat little ball there from Chukwesi. It's Rafael Lauer to roll that one home. Well, the point I was going to make is that throughout the seasons of this competition, as Beal has been one of the archetypes, if you will, architects of playing around the strengths of your virtual squads. And you feel that by using Giroud as that focal point of the attack, it's just going to give him that extra dimension that teams might struggle to deal with. Defensively, it might just be a bit too far out of the ordinary. It's proven that way for Marios so far as he trails. Despite taking the lead twice in this game, and it's Maccabeel. Love to try and get another attack on that far side, but we'll oh, get a second chance here or not. There's a big space here for Olivier Giroud and Leo! at the back for Mariosh. Two white shirts essentially through on goal. And Uzmak Abil, he eats those types of chances for breakfast. 4-2 now. Yeah, you can't be giving a player of Uzmak Abil's quality that type of opportunity. And again, we always talk about the percentage chances that these guys will take. They won't look to try and maybe chip the goalkeeper or try and a uh, controlled shot around them. Instead, just try and roll it over to his teammate and just say, there's a free opportunity. Thank you very much. 4-2. Great advertisement for, of course, the console platform. So many goals and... Something tells me we might not be done yet. And of course, it's worst case scenario for Marios. He has an attack here, though, on that far side. Who can he find in the box? He's taking it all the way here, just causing a bit of chaos. Still alive as well. Bill finally clears. Worst case scenario for Marios, of course, losing his first group game prior to this. So I feel like we needed to see him pick up some form of points. Still time on the clock though, so still in with the puncher's chance. Just make a bill, just a little sluggish on the ball there. As once again Marios comes forward, but Defensively, was Maccabeal just he's able to clear, but can't clear that final third. Finally, now a, a chance to clear and maybe settle down. And that's one of the strengths of having a, a big man up top, where you can win those types of headers and reset the play a little bit. Yeah, it just takes the pressure out of it just a little bit. I mean, was Maccabeal's concentration in the, in the last 10 or so in-game minutes has been tested to its it's absolute limit because his attacks from Marios are relentless. He just can't seem to find the final pass to get himself in. There's still time on the clock, of course, but as it gets closer towards the end of the game, those chances are going to really dry up. And it will, and you'll see the radar, of course, at the bottom of the screen. It's like a bill constantly trying to get that ball up the pitch and then push his back line up. And to get them closer to that halfway line. Good work by Chuk Wesley and his Maccabeel. 
in the final 10 with a two-goal advantage. Not often you see him throw these types of results away. Liao now. Near side. Still with work to do. Looks like he's just won a throw in by the corner flag. Territory wise, this will suit the man representing Algeria very nicely. He's experienced in these types of games, has played, dare I say, hundreds of them in his career to see out a result. For Marios, it really has to be now to get anything from this game. But as we creep closer and closer towards that final whistle, it's looking like it's going to be six points from six. Four is Maccabeel so far here in the group stages. Just one minute added on and well, Marios cannot form some kind of attack, so the referee no doubt will blow his whistle. But as does his Maccabeel maybe fancy one more goal to add to his tally. It would have been a corner, but the referee's seen enough. He's called time. Marios two. Uzmaka Beal 4. And what do you say, Wes? Uh, a world champion performance. It started so well for Marios. Mm. It started so well, but then that championship mentality, that pedigree really showed through for Uzmaka Beal. Again, he was given the license to get that third goal. You cannot give somebody that type of opportunity in, in that environment, especially when you're in uh, almost a position. I mean, Again, he's now going to need potentially results to go his way, Marios, to even think about trying to get that second place because you can only think that maybe Osmaka Bill may just take that top spot because he's on six points at the moment. He's in very fine form. He most certainly is. And of course, we, we saw, as you said, a fine, fine start for Marios. And against a player like Osmaka Bill, you have to start that way, but also you have to maintain it throughout. And it just felt maybe the gas was lifted a little bit by by Marios and it's hard to maintain that type of pace when Uzmakabil can score, goal, sc score goals, excuse me, as I put my teeth back in, just like that, Wes, the, the perfect reply just to remind Marios who has the world titles in this uh, matchup. And we saw the Greek go back in front and it's like, okay, maybe we're going to see a shootout. But seemingly close afterwards, we saw Uzmakabil again just immediate reply that's what we talk about when we say world championship pedigree yeah he's a bit of a gunslinger as we we've seen so many times in these uh, tournaments prior or tournaments previous to this we've seen just at the rate that Osmakabel can score goals uh, that is always a warning so if you're ever to see that name in any knockout competition mm. same thing for the likes of you see like an Etorito or a yeah. Nexa or somebody of that ilk you know that you're in for a very hard game regardless of the the team that you're playing with regardless uh, of the kind of the circumstances because you said it very well Buzz Macapil knows how to get the best out of teams it's mm. almost like he knows the DNA of the clubs that he plays with and as a result he gets the best out of those teams yeah club affinity and club DNA are things we speak about a lot is Macapil one of the best we saw that goal there from Liao but it really was a, at this stage of the game maybe Marios just wanted to move up the gears a little bit too fast and enabled those two men in on goal for his Macapil to essentially put the game to bed we speak about him as such a strong knockout tournament player. This is just the group stages, Sebra. I mean, he this isn't what he lives for. He wants to be in that knockout stage, and he's all but guaranteed it with that result. I tell you what, you ask, he delivers, right? Yeah. You wanted more goals from him? Well, you got four. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe there'll be even more than after this. Obviously, it's plain sailing for him thus far. It's six points from six, a clean sweep of two victories from two. We'll see, though, if Kalahar can do the same and follow suit because he's up next against Jan Sui. Jan Sui hasn't actually able to put any points yet on the board. So that would be quite an interesting, intriguing encounter to see if there is um, someone who actually keep up with the pace of the likes of Uzma. Do you think that he can, Kalahar? 
I think so. I think he's got it. Certainly from from what I've I've watched on on his streams and things of that nature. That's right. You did seem to be a, quite a big fan and impressed with what he had done in Mexico, right? Yeah, yeah. And and of course, in terms of pedigree, you've mm. got players like the Arsenal style come from Mexico. That that's a again a, a region that is a hotbed for e football, mm. e sports talent, and. I think Khaled is the next one up. Granted, yes, I think he's, what, 30, 30 years old, I think I saw from his bio. So the, un age the is other no end of the age spectrum. Yeah, but age is no number. When you have a controller in front of your hands, age is no number. Well, well. well the dexterity of your, you know, hands and fingers and, you know, how quick you can actually react to things. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, there is the argument to that, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep my stance. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just throwing it in just in case it does happen to be an interesting part of a Indeed. conversation. Indeed. But anyway, let's take a quick look at mobile and see how things are shaping up over here. So in the last match, we had Obrushu, who actually lost after picking up three points wow. in his first game. He lost to A. Ermiki, who now has four points on the board, which means he is now the leader of that group. Very interesting indeed. Next up, we've got his fellow Moroccan Maybe 7X, who is also looking for his first victory of the day. He will be going up against Joybo, who picked up one point from his opening match. So, much tighter group. A much tighter group, and I tell you what, that's a result that uh, Maybe did not want to see. It means now that he, essentially, as we look at the group stage table, mm. we, we need to see Maybe win his next game. It's as simple as that, I, I'm, I'm fairly certain. Uh, in order to make sure that he can get through to, to the knockout stage. Luckily, we have our boffins here again, our, our wonderful admin team in the back, making sure that, you know, <laughs> all kind of tie play breaker implications are followed through to the regulations and the rules set ahead of time. But I'm thinking in my head, if I'm maybe now, it's, it's win or go home. It's, it's really intriguing and it's, it's exciting to see at least in mobile just how tight it is because it is all to play for still. No one has a sure foot into the grand finale of the day as of yet. Although things seem to be a little bit different when it comes to the console mode of play. Speaking of which, we have up next some heavy hitters then to see if Kalahar can actually keep up the pace with Uzmakabil at the top of the lot or if Jansui can spoil the party. Enjoy. June Sui spoil the party. A question that Semra asked, I assume it's rhetorical, but probably we're gonna find the answer out at the end of this 90 minutes, Wes, against Kalahad, of course, from Mexico. We spoke about him, the America's regional winner. Somewhat new to the eFootball scene, but streams a lot. There's a lot of information about him out there. And America's as a region has qualified two representatives to the world finals already both back in barcelona if i remember correctly so he'll be hoping he can join them his opponent of course jun sui from thailand the asia east oceania and others regional winner we will have joined sui here trying to force the issue early on in the home strip and kalahad from mexico will be in that changed away strip and seems to me that the man from Thailand of course very young has the real opening chances here offside that time around but territory wise in the opening stages looking pretty good yeah I mean these two players will have differing uh, kind of experience levels in terms of being on this type of stage of course Kalahad used to being in front of an audience with his live streams of course, on the other side of the fence with uh, Jean Sweet. Won previously a Thailand uh, eFootball League title. Has also finished in the top eight of the International Cup in 2022. So has a bit of pedigree with competing in competitions. It would be interesting to see the dynamic between these two because often we see South America against kind of Asia competitors. It's a real fire versus ice type of gameplay that we'll really see here. Kalahard will have this in swinging corner. Looks like he doesn't know whether to play it short or towards the front post. In the end, it's the latter. But it's a very interesting dynamic because, as we said, Jun Sui, very young, youth on his side. But the accolades on his side as well, the experience, and usually it's the opposite. Usually you see the, the elder of the two competitors. 
having that experience, having those intangibles, of course, life experience comes into it, but for the sake of e-footballing terms, you would say that Jun Tsui has the more experience towards the top level, even at his young age. And there's a chance here for Kalahard, maybe, to see what can be done. And Anders Do for Jun Tsui. He's able to break up the play, and now Loftus Sheik can. Well, he can try and break the lines, but defensively, especially in that midfield, Kalahard has looked good. Near side now. Calabria for company, and that's a very strong tackle and a vital one as well to just relieve that pressure valve a little bit, but it's tightened once more. Benesser now. Okafor back to Benesser, and this is good build up play from Jun Sui. Towards Adli and Liao with the header, but just gone a touch too fast there as the referee's assistant will call for offside. Jean Sui looking comfortable with taking pressure on board. He's very happy to just maybe sit there and then hit players on the break. I think that seemingly is what he's looking for here. As you said, always fun to see the differing styles of play from the different regions, how they complement and nullify each other. We saw it, of course, from Talon Sui last week in Munich, winning for the mobile platform, if I'm remembering correctly. Can his compatriot on the opposing platform go on better here for now it's Callahad from Mexico I think that's the third offside so far here in the 25th minute of course in the game we saw just previous whereas we had four goals by this point it's looking like closer to four offsides yeah this is uh, this is a, a different style of game that you're seeing here compared to the game you have just seen this is a bit more of a tactical nuance and just trying to utilize the ball I think for the game we saw between Uzmakabil and Marius, I think it was just a case of how much damage can do you do to your opponent as quickly as possible. This one, a little bit more thought out, a little bit more, I kind of say, almost cagey is, the, is the, the UK parlance for it. Just seems to be a little bit nervy between these two players. Of course, no doubt, when you look at the, the landscape of the group, having seen the game we've just seen between Marius and Uzmakabil, both of these... Players will be chasing Osmakabil at the top of the group. Jun Sui, of course, has already played the man currently leading, and Liao is into Okafor and Loftus Cheek to follow up. And Jun Sui will open scoring here, opens his account, his first goal of the group stages to make it 1 0 now. And again, it was good work down the left hand side, work the opportunity. Again, a little bit of fortune with the, the ricochet off the, off the save here could, that we've seen he's fallen to defenders on countless occasions. Said so this time falls to the very gleeful right foot of Ruben Loftus-Cheek. He sweeps it home for jean Sui's first goal, as you quite rightly said, of this club finals. Of course, his first match of the groups was up against as Maccabeel, who is head and shoulders above the rest so far. A 1-0 loss to the aforementioned Algerian. Means that Jun Sui, who is attacking here as well, could really do with the result here. Adli with the low cross. Manyan met it at the near post. Of course, 1-0 against this Maccabeel, who we've just seen, who scores goals in bunches not a bad scoreline at all but the points are what counts at this stage of the competition five to go until half time Teo Hernandez lovely ball down the line Three, four men to look for, and it's Liao who is able to latch onto it. 
tricky chance to convert in truth, but might spell the sign of things to come here in what little remains of this first half. Just two added on by the referee's assistant, and Callahard has been fairly quiet for the last 15 or so in-game minutes, but he's got to the byline here. Who can he find? Only Tamori for company. Still alive here, though, for Callahard, but dispossessed, and first half is now over. With the man from Thailand dominating proceedings. One goal to nil is the lead. Yeah, very much utilised that counter-attack play style that we have seen to good use. Got himself a goal, got his nose in front. Still yet to see a shot registered by Callahard, but I would Im I'd imagine that to change from the Mexican. Of course, the sides have changed as well. Now see Callahard defending from left to right. He's got defensive duties to do here, defending this left goal. And then, of course, Sean Sui going the other way with the one goal lead. Tamori heads it on, and Adley is there. Corner, Junsui has uh, well started this second half as he ended the first. Okafor can't quite latch onto it, and it's another offside here. He's very much kept his uh, foot to the floor as Junsui kind of almost echoes, or at least shows you the almost the the play style that we said that Marios needed to employ against us. Maccabeo needed to stay on top. When you're on top, you stay on top. You don't allow your opponent an easy in. I still don't think that we've had a shot registered by Callahard as yet. Can that change as he ventures into the box? There's a real chance here with Giroud. He cuts it back! And the first shot is the first goal. Callahard converts with Trukwesi. And you said it, Wes, you have to stay on top once you get on top. And the door was open for Callahard, gets his equaliser. And the second half now, there's no doubt set up for drama. Yeah, it's really good composure from Callahard. This touch here takes it towards the goalkeeper, baits out the goalkeeper to dive at his feet, rolls it back to Chukwese. Really, really good eye there for the Mexican. And we spoke openly about uh, players at this level will look to adopt that 100% chance. They won't like to take any risks if they don't need to. Certainly with a player over there, far easier and more effective to roll it across. And Lajic, where's he to took that one home? Sweep one, Callahard one. As we said, it's mostly about taking the chances when they appear. Callahard has done well so far. It's coming forward again. Defended well by Jun Sui. As we said, youth on his side has had tournament results go his way when he was as young as 14. That was a couple of years ago now, so this is going to be a big test after losing his first group match game. Could be a real chance to stamp your authority going into the final group game, of course, coming later today. On the other side, Kalahar, the mission remains very much the same as defending to do, though, Okafor. Oh, he's chased this ball down, and it's a wide-open goal for Jean Sui. The persistence, the pressure from Okafor. Punishing the mistake from the goalkeeper. Callahan just caught hesitant. And the lead reinstated, 2-1. That's the risk you have when you try those stunning inputs. When you see the power bar go purple, it takes an extra second or two because it's that risk you have of having more power on your clearance. The issue is, of course, if you've got somebody bearing down on you, as you do here, it is an absolute gift of an opportunity here. He just gets his 
toe to it, tucks it away. And that is Okafor in a nutshell. As much as we can bemoan the hesitance, indecisiveness, or as you say, maybe wrong decision from Kalahar to go for that stunning input and take that extra touch. We have to commend the persistence from Okafor just to follow through. And Junsui is able to buy a ticket to the raffle. I almost used the, the simile, but I won't this time. <laughs> No, certainly, but you're quite right in saying for, for Jean Sweet, you chase down any and all opportunities. You chase them down. You don't allow your opponent to breathe. You don't allow him the opportunity to actually even play out from the back. Instead, actually, you just suffocate him at source. And as a result, there's one key error. And as a result, it is now two goals to one. Two goals to one indeed, and following the goal, we're seeing, I believe, Galahar just double-check the team tactics are in order, seeing what Junsui wants to do with his Paul's time. Just something of note as well for those of you at home. If you're looking for an expert way of how to hide your formation from other opponents, make sure you have sub-tactic equips because it allows you to basically have your formation as it looks on the screen. But the reality is, is that if you've clicked your sub-tactic on, actually, your team will play in whatever secret way that your opponent won't be able to see. Top tips from our top pundit, Wes. I'll be using that when I get home. <laughs> it's a very easy way of stopping opponents from looking at your tactics because certainly looking at it here, it doesn't look like a 4-1-4-1 that's attacking here. Well, we're into the final 20 in-game minutes. Shunsui 2, Kalahad 1. Here's the man from Mexico attacking now, and he's got to the byline. Who can he find? Oh, it's into a forest of players. We'll come back at Junsui's defence, though. Good foot stuck in, but that's bounced into a dangerous area. Tomori deals with it, and well, he's got a willing runner here in Musa. Liao with just one too many players for company. The tempo just has to increase here as we take a quick look at the group tables. As the ball rolls agonisingly out of play. Here's how it would be as things stand, Wes. Yeah, I wouldn't like to be a uh, referee trying to unravel that mystery in either one of those groups because the way that this is shaping up now with this result, you're going to have people level on points, potentially level on goal difference, level on goal scored. There could be a whole host of ramifications. Oh, it's a terrible Leo giveaway. Is through. Jean -Sui. Oh, it's off the post. Oh, that could have sealed it. Still alive here. And Callahard is living very dangerously at the back. And most importantly, that the in game time are not on his side either. The tempo from Junsui has been steady, but been steadily increasing as well. What response is there from Kalahard? We asked that of him moments before the goal. The goal now would be a vital time to score one. Musa with the dispossession, Liao near side and well there's three red shirts to aim for and only two defenders keeping pace and there's a chance maybe for Giroud to make that result certain, but it's from Sweet with the ball and it's in a difficult position for Kalahar to capitalise off of. It's at the wrong end of the pitch for him and when you look at the score, the points look like they're going to go the other way. Corner played short, four minutes added on, so there's still a chance. I think a foul's been given away. By Kalahard here. Frustration may be creeping in. He knows 
times there was a chance in this game, having seen Jun Sui's result in his first match to maybe knock out one of his competitors before the final round of fixtures in this group. And it has, as things stand, Wes, well and truly put the cat amongst the pigeons. And this free kick played into a very dangerous area. Who's this running onto it? Trukwesi. Smartly opting to keep possession here. As we are just creeping over now into the fourth, not quite a four added on. And with this throw in, as long as he gets this right, you'd have to say the time will just be insurmountable. It's been a very tight game of e-football here at the AC Milan club finals, but in the end, great control in the final third from Jun Sui, and Chuk Wesi has a chance to maybe put some icing on the cake, but the three points will go his way. Jun Sui stays alive in the competition and actually puts himself in a fantastic position in this group. Three points, 2-1 versus Kalahar. I'd say it's the driver's seat now to, to get into that second place berth because if you look at the final round of fixtures in the console stage, it's a Smackabeel versus Kalahard. Mm. Kalahard's going to have to get a result there to stay in contention. Yeah. And also, though, that result also just slightly creaks open the door for Marius as well. So it, it's all really to play for here. I mean, again, we saw, again, it was a, it was a really, really well-worked goal for, uh, again, it was just creating that opportunity, mm. getting down the left-hand side, again, causing the goalkeeper to make a save, parries it back into, uh, as we said, a very gleeful Ruben Loftus-Cheek <laughs> who sw swept that one home. And from there, it, you kind of felt as though the Jun Sui was very much just in the box seat, was just plodding along, mm. and then all of a sudden we saw Kalahard get one back, and then that really kind of prompted John Sweet to go and get that second. That it did, and we saw in the opening 25 minutes, didn't we? we? We remarked on it that in the game we saw previously, we saw four goals, and in this game we saw four offsides. So both both players really trying to, to force the issue. It was John Sui who, who you rightly said, we've lost his cheek, able to tuck home the opener. But then this response on the 55th minute really did blow the game wide open. Kalahad then said to Jun Sui, all right, I, I've shown I can score goals against you. Now can you prove you can score more goals against me? And, and at this point in the game, with it being 1-1, you really couldn't decide who was going to be the one to, to really make the difference and take home those three points. I wonder whether or not that mistake we saw from, from Kalahard, he might come at the end of the day to think back, ah, why, why did I take that extra touch with the goalkeeper? Whether or not there was... I don't know, a wrong input, no, maybe said, a it's hesitation. That, it's, that, it's that stunning input. It mm. takes that extra moment or so for it to kind of kick on. You, you, you do get extra power on your kicks, but the trade-off is that the animation takes a lot longer to wind up. So it's almost like you're kind of winding up the pitch, but then somebody is, you've already struck out. And that essentially what happened there. So Okafor goes down the gap. Oh, it stormed in, took the ball, and the easiest winning goal you're ever likely to see. I'll tell you what, it was a masterful control towards the, the final 10 in-game minutes as well from, from such a young competitor when you consider as well his first game against his Maccabeel scores goals for fun, only one goal to nil, he loses that game. John Sway could be a dark horse in this competition, remember the, na the name because at the end of the day he could be one of the champions here. Winner of that game was his Maccabeel because I think he's actually now officially qualified for the final because Maybe. mathematically, I don't think anybody can catch him now. He's got six points, I think, at best. Maybe, I mean, let's see. Is Makabila if he loses? Okay, John Sweet. Or even Kalahar. Well, so well, this is, this is, well, this is, this is why this is why we allow the boffins to try and tell yeah. us yeah, what we're going to do. But, I thought I would but, just sweep in here and be all like <laughs> smart with my well, mathematical well, equations. But turns out I think I'm just wrong. Well, so. with, the, with the console <laughs> table, you could potentially end up with three players on six points. Yeah. And one of them could, one of them's going to okay, lose Okay, well, then out. you go even better. Yeah. So you've got a three-way tie potentially. And that would be actually very exciting, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely it would. But it would also be turning, you know, turning in a performance at the club finals. You win two games and then someone says sorry can't, yeah. gotta go home even though you've got six <laughs> points i think that would be an incredible way to go out
Okay, well, why don't we switch over to mobile because this is what we're going to be seeing next, by the way. Match five is going to be available on stream between Obrusho and Joy Boy, which we'll get to in just a minute. But let's just do some quick maths here because Obrusho, he won the first game, lost the second one. Joy Boy picked up one point, but things improved for him. So three points in the second game. That means that both of them, as far as I make it out to be, they're the two ones that are currently... No, Ermike is there too. But yes, it's really tight indeed. You've got Joy Boy Ermiki on four points, and Obrusho's got three, just one less. Maybe 7x. Well, he definitely does have to try and get something on the board, but I think it's going to be too little too late potentially for him. He might be the first one who's going to be bowing out here. But um, a nice one then between Joy Boy and Obrusho. Very tight indeed. Yeah, very, very tight, and honestly could decide who is going to be the, the mm. one to advance between the two players that we see. I mean, that's the beauty of this type of competition. Not only do we have, of course, the, the round robin groups between the two platforms, only four members in each of those groups, so every single point matters. But also the competition as a whole. These, these players have been competing to try and qualify to this stage for the last two or so months. Mm. So it's been grueling. It's been a grueling two months, but I love it because anyone can try and qualify for these types of competitions. You don't have to be a pro player. As long as you're good enough to get to this stage, you're in with a chance. Well, that's the beauty, isn't it? Because most of the players here haven't actually been professional players, historically mm. speaking. Most of them are amateurs right officially but now they are going to maybe change that tide onto something a little bit more professionalized then we shall say well look we've got a great matchup then coming your way uh, on the mobile mode of play it's going to be uh, Arushu against Joy Boy versus Joy Boy for what would be I think it, it's a winning in type scenario isn't it Wes if you win this you take all three points then you, you punch your ticket to that knockout stage game later on today correct yeah it, it is a case of winner winner takes everything to the grand final as it were and it's Brujo versus your boy Joy, Joy Boy so uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how these two play off against one another. Again, Brujo being the experienced one of these two players, shall we say. And of course, as you mentioned, Joy Boy being the one that wants to download a little bit about his opponents and wants to figure out what makes them tick. Um, certainly, he'll have a, a very experienced player to try and learn from. I think I figured out what it is, Wes. My in-game name is Wonder Boy. Yep, you're mouthing it to me now. <laughs> It's us boys, they have to stick together. Yep, absolutely. It's, uh, it's boy code, as it were. That it is, and we are underway. Joy Boy on the ball with Pulisic in the home strip. Attacking that right-hand goal will be the Brazilian Brujo in the all-changed white strip. He'll be trying to defend that goal. Benacer, though, for Joy Boy. Tries to force the issue, and, and something we've seen so far throughout today and throughout all of the club finals, the mobile platform, yes, there tends to be a bit more chances, but those chances really have to be taken, Wes, because despite there being more chances and more open play, that timer and that clock you see in the top left-hand side of your screen once play resumes, it ticks up a lot faster than you'll see on the console side, so important that when those chances do appear, you tuck them home. Yeah, and we've said it often already today is that it, it is a blink and you'll miss it. In terms of these games, they are very fast-paced. They are very attack-orientated, as you see Giroud. Yeah, Giroud near post here. Oh, he's gone straight for goal. And what a finish that is from Joy Boy. Everyone had their heads up looking. Who could he pick out in the box? Go straight for goal. Had no right to from that angle, Wes, but this finish is the type of finish Giroud can bring to your squad. Yeah, and he's one of my favourite players for a very, very good reason. The the beauty of that goal, uh, you know, the, the commentary parlance is he's got good feet for a big man. Very good feet for a big man, has Olivier Giroud. You'll see it here, just 
knocks it there. And rather than looking for the pass across goal, oh. I think he realised that if the if the if the pass goes across, the animation from the goalkeeper comes out to parry it wide. Whereas Rose actually sometimes it's better to go for a shot from that angle and especially a low one at that and as you quite rightly mimicked it was almost that banana shot that you see just go into the corner just had beautiful spin on it with the outside of the boot from Olivier Giroud puts Joy Boy well and truly in the driver's seat now in this group he's played very well so far but the job is not finished and certainly for Brujo there is still time on the clock. Brujo may have tempted a little bit of fate here. I remember reading his bio, he was looking forward to representing AC Milan in Tokyo. Such was the confidence of the Brazilian and he may have just tempted fate here. He's spoken too soon, but I believe in the power of manifestation. You know, you speak it into the universe and it will come to you. Pause queued up. You can see in the top right hand side of your screen, if it's your first time experiencing eFootball with us today, that means the next time the ball goes out of play or players stopped for a foul, an offside, a throw in, players will have a chance to tweak their lineups, formations, tactics, as well as personnel. And right on cue, Wes, here is that pause. Yeah, it's almost a it's very deliberate hook of the ball out of play because you can even see there changing formations coming in. But interestingly is that sometimes, as we said, because of the time it ticks down that quickly, if you're looking to get a change done early, you, you don't want to wait until half time because of how quickly it ticks down you may just want to hook the ball out into touch the only issue with that of course is you give the ball back to your opponent which could very much be something to worry about here yeah joy boy clearly seeing something he wasn't too happy with but you're right it has i believe gifted a throw in over to brujo in Joy Boy's final third. Such is the tactical side of the mobile platform. And as you say, because that timer ticks up much, much quicker, you do have limited opportunities to make sure your tactics, your formations are all exactly how you want them to be. Musa for Joy Boy now. Lovely one two with Christian Pulisic. Tries to beat Kalulu, but nothing doing. Hanyan came a long way from his goal. We're approaching half time. And Joy Boy won, Brujo nil. enjoyed following the mobile platform this season whereas throughout all the, the club events we've been to so far including this one it's just so much about who can take those chances when they appear often in console we can see you make up for some missed chances but it's, it's almost cutthroat at this level on the mobile platform i'll come back to that as pulisic has plenty of time and space and Giroud with a header oh how's this one not gone in Really good work down the left-hand side. I think it's just headed down into the ground, just not quite the direction on it from Olivier Giroud. I don't think Magnan got a touch either. I don't think he did. I think he was just watching it go wide instead, and that is the confirmation that that is the case. But you're quite right. I think that the, the, the subtle beauty in the mobile uh, platform here is the pace that it's played at. Yes, uh, you know, there are some viewers out there that very much like the tactical nuances of console. They very much like the, the, you know, almost wars of attrition that you can sometimes see. But this one, it's a bit more, as we said, you throw the shackles off and you just go, right, we're going to attack each other relentlessly and we'll just see what happens at the end. Once the dust settles, we'll figure it all out afterwards. But until then, it is all kind of action here between these two and the four that we have seen today. And it is. It's good fun to watch, good fun to play as well. 
and we're underway in the second half. Giroud here for Brujo. Wins the ball back and can't quite feed his teammate running into the box. But Joy Boy has been impressive throughout today. We've seen him with results both on and off of our stream. Chukwesi can't find Olivier Giroud, of course, beating uh, Eremiki earlier on in the stream. Joy Boy is, again, I picked him at the, the top of the show. He looked to be one of the stronger competitors coming into today. You know India, such a massive population there. If you can take a big sample size from that country, put them into esports, no doubt they'll find success. There's a chance for Brujo though. Here comes Joy Boy. Already with one goal to the good. Can't quite break down that far side. Tomori just out of danger. It looks like the two Tomoris just playing football tennis there, Wes. Yeah, a little bit of uh, volleyball between the two. But again, that's uh, I suppose it, when you look at AC Milan as a as a club, in terms of if you were to put these two teams as we're seeing up against one another, the attacking style of Olivier Giroud would probably go against that style of Tomori. And the physical encounters, it, they're very much 50-50s. Final 15 in-game minutes for Brujo. He'll no doubt be thinking at the moment, I should have put Do Not Disturb on. Yeah, certainly. Certainly, he has uh, he's not put himself in airplane mode, has he? And again, even then, as we say, as about, about distractions, that, that can be one of them. Definitely can. As silly as it sounds, it really can be one of those distractions because it can almost break your concentration to a point where you forget what you're actually meant to be doing here. And at the moment, he trails one goal to nil to Joy Boy. Joy Boy looking to punch his ticket to the knockout stage later today. That one's going to be called back for an offside. No doubt a pause coming in here. It's last chance, Saloon, essentially. We said it was a winning in type situation. We'll have to see what happened in the other mobile match to get confirmation, of course, in our mobile group stage here, Wes. It certainly answers your question from early run as to whether it's a, uh, a dedicated device or whether it's a personal one. Uh, certainly, and, and interestingly, on this side of things here, you just see just how tired that defensive bat line is. And again, it's, it's, it's great having your attacking options on. Great. But when you're trying to, uh, again, certainly trying to push it, I mean, there's not long left here. And if you're going to change it around at that point, especially in the mobile platform, <laughs> is it too little too late is the real question. Looks like the personnel overload to be on that left-hand side. Thankfully for Brujo, he's not had too many unsavory notifications come up just yet, but it will take you out of the, the concentration. And at this level, on this platform, with this control scheme, it can be really just a moment's hesitation. And we saw it in the, in the previous game, didn't we? On the console platform, Kalahar just uh, a lapse in concentration, trying to queue up that input with his goalkeeper in the end was the difference between the points being shared and all three points going the other way. Yeah, and, that, and that's it. It can be moments. It, it, if you, if you know, it's almost an immersion breaker. If you, if you, if you're zoned out for, you know, a second, it can cost you at the highest level. It can and will cost you. Final throws of the game. Joy Boy looking on course to feature in the knockout stage match later on. Brujo, is there a chance for him to share the points here? Nice turn, Loftus Cheek. Tamori's up from the defense, but it will not matter. It is Joy Boy who comes out with the three points from our match on stream. 1 0 the score. Three points going back to India.
for Joy Boy and a really, really strong record in the group stages. Yeah, I mean, in terms of what we have seen already, it, it, you can, as we already mentioned, if you're standing around and your first kind of introduction to us is, I want to learn from my opponents. Mm. Certainly he's going along that that vein of picking up the tricks and picking up the skills and picking up what is effective. And certainly that is one to be looking at from his perspective. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we're seeing some of the, the action and the goals uh, from the game we just saw. I say the goals, I mean, of course, just the one goal. But it was uh, a really, really solid performance from, from Joy Boy. And again, like you say, when you're a newcomer to the eFootball scene and, and you make comments like, hey, I want to learn my tr the tricks from my opponents. I want to be put in a position where I can improve myself in the future. And you come out with solid performances like that. You're right. That's that's the making of a future star in this type of competition. Absolutely. And again, you, you, you may mention, of course, in terms of India as an emerging nation, not only just in football, but in virtual football, within esports, within everything as a nation. Um, you know, and again, they are a passionate fan base. You only have to ask some white pals at home who watch cricket in terms of the fandom that goes with that. That can transport itself to esports. They, they could they could rival a lot of teams for passion, certainly. They certainly can, and of course for, for Brujo coming from Brazil, uh, it's difficult to see a way he makes it out of this group, Semra, but again, that's you know, that's the reason we have our wonderful admin team in the back, our referees, because uh, we're not great at mathematics, so we've got them in the back making sure everything is being followed. I love how often we feel the need to say that. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know by now, you're going to know. Yeah, if you, if you, you know by now, we just want to make sure you all know. We're not exactly that sharp on it, so we do thankfully have people who are putting these lovely graphics together to let us know exactly where we stand. I mean, listen, we've had five games down in the group stage. We have one more left to go for both console, uh, console and mobile. Why don't we take a quick look then and see where we're actually at? Let's take stock here then, shall we? Um, obviously, we've seen what just happened. You guys already brilliantly explained what went down between Obrusho and Joy Boy. We have that final match between maybe 7X and Ermiki, the all Moroccan match here in the group stage uh, for mobile. But whenever it comes to console, why don't we see if we can uh, have a quick look then at that. Here we go. So, it was Maccabeel. Three more points, nine on the board. Then a clean sweep for him against Kalahad, who is uh, going to have a hard time then trying to book his ticket into the final alongside the man representing Algeria. Then we have that last fixture for you, Jean Sui, against Marios. Marios, who is, I believe, yet to pick up a single point so far. Jean Sui, however, I think is still in the running. I think he is. Again, I'm so grateful for our referees <laughs> well, here. There you because... go. He is in the running. I mean, Ooh. he's six points behind, but it's it's oh, it's down between him and, <sighs> and Kalahaz, Honestly, eh? Honestly, this could get very messy towards the end of this group. I will say, love that for the console platform. No draws yet. We haven't had a single <laughs> yeah, draw. It's, a it's, it's been a decision it's in every all single out, game. All or nothing. So I, I like that. I hope that <sighs> spells some nice drama and entertainment for us later on. I'm, I'm sure it will. But yeah, that, that group... Oh, it looks so tight. So, can you believe it? I mean, Joy Boy, I guess, is the only other person who's officially... Yeah, he would be, right? He's booked his place, too. So, that means that both the second spot for mobile and console is still very much up for grabs. But that's just how we like it. We do like a little bit of contention still towards this final match of the group stage on both sides. At least there's still something to play for, and still quite a few fair finalists involved really i'm oh, just uh, again my, my i mean if you brain... had to, if you had to wager a guess <laughs> look, because quite frankly it's down to john swing mm -hmm. or air mickey in obrusho if you had to hedge a bet who do you think it's going to be oh it's difficult because it could also be mariosh because <laughs> it, he then plays john <laughs> i was going to say i can, no, I can happily no way, could i can happily jump in here and help you out with please this. so if we're thinking about tiebreakers at home folks again just hear me out follow me on this I'm going to write this down starts on goal scored then it goes to goal difference if those are the level it then goes to the head to head in that game okay. or, of their opponents so realistically it is one from three in the console I think if my maths are right uh, Mickey is going to play Joy Boy in the final because he can't be caught because Brujo's played all three games yes, now. so right. uh, Mickey's in Joy Boy's in but then it is one from three 
on that top, okay. and it just depends on this last game. Ooh. If you want drama, folks, oh, we've got it here in abundance. Yes, that's Goodness. exactly what we want. We want drama. We want a three-way tie for second. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah thank okay. you for it's explaining okay. that, by the way. <laughs> that, right. was, that was very well done. So let's see then who is going to be joining Uzmakabil in the console final. It's going to be potentially one of these three, two of which are going to be lining up against one another right now. It's John Sui against Marios. This is the part of the group where it gets a little bit more complicated. And I'm glad you've summed it up for us <laughs> just before we are getting underway here. It's our final console group stage match between Junsui of Thailand versus Mariosh of Greece. If I'm right in saying Mariosh is behind quite a lot on goal difference based on his results against Uzmak Abil and, and also Kalahard in this group. Correct, but you also have to think about as well as that Marios has scored goals in this group, mm. whereas uh, there's so many permutations here, folks. Jensui has only scored, I believe, it's two goals in this group. So there are so many different things that we've got to, you know. I mean, if, if Jensui wants to make this simple for us, if he can just go ahead and win this game, <laughs> that would make it so much more simple for everybody here. However, though, he is up against Marios, who we saw start very quick against us, Maccabeel. And again, it just depends on how play styles match up against one another. Of course, I will no doubt hold a verbated breath after this game to try and figure out or to let the, the referees and admins figure out who's gotten through to the final alongside Uzmak uh, Again, who made itself very simple for himself, got all nine points and was just like, well, you three can just wore it out amongst <laughs> yourselves. I'll wait for whoever's here in the final and, and, and that be that. But this, though... Again, with the stakes that are on the line, with the fact that Marios now Marios needs to win just to have a an entry into the conversation. That that's simple. If Jean Sui wins, there is no conversation to be had. And if it's a draw, again, no conversation to be had. Jen Sui will go through. It is win or bust here for Marios. It just depends on all of the other things that could potentially be triggered here. Well, Marios is starting very nicely here with Okafor and oh we said he needs a win, Wes. And I believe he needs to win big. He started off as he did against Uzmaka Beal with a goal in the opening five minutes, this time in the opening two. If my memory serves correctly, he was on minus three before this game started. And John Sweet was on zero for goal difference. So it's what, a three goal or two goal swing that is all that is required. And what a start that we have seen here from Marios. Again, just really just, again, clean e-football. Just gets it through the lines, gets the wrong side of a defender. And then he's decisive with the decision-making. Gets into the box, knows he's got Okafor to his left, slots it across, and the man rolls it home for one goal, 2 nil. Well, never have I been more grateful for our adrenaline refs, our fantastic group we have behind the scenes running the competition this season because... Well, I'm grateful for you as well, Wes, but those are the, the people who make it official. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And for Mariosh, he knows the task. He absolutely knows the assignment here. A draw, no good. He needs a win with plenty of goals to go with it. As we've seen throughout today, we've, we've spoken about both of these players' youth across the board, two of the youngest players we've seen go up against each other head-to-head -head so far, and well, Loftus-Cheek forces a wonderful save. Manyan called into action for Mariosh. And this was a, a real star-studded chance there on the half volley for Loftus-Cheek. Maybe should have tucked that one away. A yeah, big save from Manyan, but it's not quite over in terms of danger here. Moria, that front post is the, the target. Down to Liao, it's gone all the way through. Through a forest of players, so many bodies in there, but it creeps into the bottom left of the goal. And Jean Sui 
is back on level terms and a reminder a draw is good enough for him at this moment in time now is it again perfect time to respond it's tomori against tomori and again we talk about 50 50s and about who can win the battle it, it then comes down to more down to manual positioning and again just getting the get chance we just getting the player or getting tomori just in front of his opponent manages to get the flick on and probably finds the only space that he could have put that ball well, the console platform today has delivered and then some plenty of action plenty of goals as i said before not a single draw in this group stage so far I would hate to jinx it, of course, because Marios needs to win by a decent margin. Off to streak now for Jim Swoy, and well, he's got the ball, says the referee, did Marios. Trying to look at, across the board for our Greek representative here I'm not seeing Olivier Giroud unless I've missed him somewhere looks like Benacer is in the midfield layout in the center double touch around to Rory oh. rattles the woodwork danger not cleared just yet now might be time to relieve that pressure but I think the bar's still shaking what a hit there's one part I'm thinking of here is that if the first separator is goals scored, Marios might only just need to win this by the odd goal because, again, the amount of goals he's scored in the group stage so far, he's, he's been scoring goals. So, you know, that may be kind of rock and roll kind of uh, play style that we saw against Maccabeo may actually help him out here. Of course, if results stay as it is, as you see Okafor into the box, Results say as it is, it won't matter a job. He needs to have the victory. John Swee may not let him have it. Well, the man you mentioned is coming forward with Loftus Cheek. And forces a corner out of Marios. That's a good point you raise, Wes, because the tiebreaker waterfall is a little different in this type of competition. Loftus Cheek from the corner of John Swee. It's finally. Cleared away by Marios. Goal different comes after goal scored in that tiebreaker waterfall. So you're right, depending on how close this gets to a cricket score. You may see a twist in the tail. We'll leave that to our referees in the back, but for now, we keep our eyes, eyes peeled to our final match of the group stages today. Simon Kier is able to win the ball back for Jean Sui. And the how far side is, well, his touch let him down. He maybe came uh, unglued there by that stunning input again. We, we saw Callahard be caught a little bit cold with it. Defensive clearance nearly on his pocket pinch there. Looks like both men just waiting for a break in the play at the moment. But this last 10, 15 or so in game, Jean Sui has really been starting to turn the screw. Trukawezi, Rafael Liao. Not well. By Marios, Okafor, into the feet of Musa, and there's a real chance for Marios, he's gone all the way through! With half-time approaching, he reinstates his lead, and as you say, Wes, the more goals he scores, the more chance this result could be telling in the tiebreaker equation. What a big moment to score, just before our time, they always say in football, It'll change a team talk, and certainly that will for Marios. Again, neat play, it's really quick opportunity 
First time strike from the edge of the box, rolls it into the back of that wonderful finish from him. And as you quite rightly said, if it's goal scored, that's the first separator. He may be in the box seat here without even really realising it. Well, you're absolutely correct in saying it's, it's the quick opportunities that Manyan seems to be getting caught out by today. Two goals for Mariosh. Just before half time as well. That's just going to plant that seed of doubt. Into Jun Sui. Giving him things to think about as he changed his tactics or personnel at the half. Speaking of, there might be more goals. The referee well, makes the first half official. Quick glimpse of the stats we saw there. The big stat that matters is. It's our good friend Mariosh. Two goals to one up against Junsui. Uh, again, very much feels like he's in the box seat here, in control of the game as well. With that goal just for half time, just snatches the impetus. Now tries to latch onto it. Manyan called into action. He's still out of his goal here. As the side swap in the second half, Mariosh still in the white strip. But key to note, Wes, we, with two youngsters here, you just have to wonder how much have they really read into the rules and regulations and tiebreaker equations. I know when I was competing in esports back then, I didn't really care too much about the rule book. I just knew I had to go in and win. But the situational awareness is what can separate you as defensively Marios half gets away with one, half does solid defensive work. I think as a as a uh, an e-football veteran of seeing many tournaments, you always check the rules and regulations because you never quite know what's the first separator. And in this instance, it's goals scored that is the first separator. So if that is the case, which I'm sure we will get a clarification on from one of our production team, we'll see beautiful that's ball a across. Really nice ball trick, Wesley. Just denied by the manual goalkeeping of Jun Sui and well, danger still on. Liao inside the box. Simon Kier for company. Oh, it's off the bar again, off the woodwork. Off that left hand upright. Bounces around but can't quite find a follow up there. Well, this has been a tremendous game. Okafor, now for Jean Troy, dispossessed. The intervention is... Well, it comes at a vital time. Speaking of a vital time, it's time for a quick breather. As there's now a chance for players to swap in personnel and swap around tactics here at the ball screen. Yeah, again, this is, we talk about moments, we talk about vital moments. It's these pause, pauses that, as we said, can... It's like dropping a pebble into a lake, and those ripples, you're not really going to realise what happens <laughs> until, until it, it works its way out. Certainly here, and as you quite rightly can see, there'll be more of a conservative formation that's shown on your screen here, but of course, please don't be fooled by that, because of course, if there are sub-tactics in play, then the real tactic that they are actually keeping under their wraps, as it were, can actually prove the difference. And it can. You don't want to be giving up too much information to your opponent if you can help it at any point. same time at this point of the game Wes with so much on the line knowing you need a result to go your way one way or the other it's how much you gamble at this point and if you're John Sui how much you get stuck in that analysis paralysis do you overthink things and then you're all of a sudden not confident or not comfortable in how your team's playing these are all dangers you can face at this stage of the competition 
and sometimes lose a game by omission. By not doing anything, you can sometimes gift your opponent an inroad. Sostituzione per il Milan. Numero 10. Numero 7. Numero 14. So after an extended break, the corner is swung in. And Hernandez for John Sui. That's a strike close to goal, but just too many defenders between him and that. And well, the pressure is relieved by the man on that far side. I think it was Hernandez. Just a little bit slow to get back in front of the defenders. Sixty-five in-game minutes just ticking over now. And a reminder, this is still the group stages, so a draw is a possibility. There's no extra time, no penalties. Those come in the games following this one. Our mobile and console grand final. We will just have to wait and see who will be featuring in those. For now, Jun Sui on the attack. Giroud just a bit lackadaisical with his footwork there. Florenzi. Liao, Musa. Liao is inside, no doubt he's the target here. Back heel towards Giroud, but that's cut out well by Marios and Pulisic opens up a nice angle with the double touch but it's just getting very nervy here and Liao for Marios can't latch on to that one too both players going for this yeah they're very much uh, throwing caution to the wind here and kind of a, maybe a little bit as you mentioned in terms of how much they really know the kind of the the potential reactions that can happen as a result of these, this result in itself. Musa. Oh, lovely ball to Giroud. Oh, saved by Manyan. That is a very important save. In truth, it was straight at him, but you expect Giroud to produce a finish in that type of scenario. How much will that frustrate Jean Sui? Needing a goal in these final 10 in-game minutes. Oh, it looked like a good challenge there, but the referee sees it differently. More changes, and I think I speak for everyone, Wes, whatever happens following this game, we have two fantastic competitors in the future of eFootball eSports is very bright indeed. Yeah, absolutely. If you, you know, you may have seen some names that were from yesteryear. These are the new ones that are on the block, as it were. Yeah, so just to kind of clarify, uh, I had my, had my rules just a slight wrong way around here. It's not gold scored first, goal difference. So that even in itself complicates things even more. And it's goal differences, then goal scored, then head-to-head. -head. And if everything matches up at that point, there's an extra match that might be needed. Christian Pulisic inside the box to Loftus-Cheek. Liao is waiting, he gets on it, and who's there? It's Olivier Giroud. Can he produce a finish? No clear sight of goal. Lorenzi for Jun Sui, just searching for that equaliser. End-to-end -end stuff here, you just don't know which way this is going to go. Good read by Mariosh. Met in kind by the Florenzi of oh, Jun Sui, but that's a bit of a waste. And in the 90th now, stoppage time, is there a last attack here? Pulisic goes for it, maybe trying to catch Magnan off, off his line, maybe a missed input. 
Well, it looks like this one might be up to the boffins in the back, Wes. Unless just. there's a chance there's not. Mariosh will take the three points with a two to one scoreline. What a game of e football! Both men left everything out there on the pitch, but you and I, we're none the wiser. What's that done to the group? We're, I, we're not sure. I, I couldn't, I couldn't split them. I couldn't split it. I don't know how they're going to split it. We're going to see the graphic along with Semra, and we're just going to have to figure out what happens next. Well, for now, let's localize it. Yeah, absolutely. Because that game that was, was absolutely brilliant. Mariosh with the dream start, as he did against his Maccabeel. Early goals seem to be in his locker. Yeah, absolutely. He seems to be a very quick starter. He wants to kind of catch his opponent's call before they even settle into any type of rhythm. He wants to get in there and say, hey, I, I can get a goal here and, and this is going to be where we kind of live for a bit. And it certainly looked like it was Marius's control that he had in the early going. And then it was a pretty quick fire response from Jean Sweet. And then, of course, we saw the goal just before half time that proved to be the difference maker between these two. I mean, that was a very, very enjoyable game of eFootball. I know. I enjoy even the stalemate cagey ones, but when you get a scenario like that where both men kind of need to go and get a result just to make it 100% certain for their fate, mm -hmm. oftentimes you can see them cancel each other out. But I tell you what, credit to both of them because the, the chances that were being made, the, the level of eFootball we saw on display in that first and second half especially, I mean, just absolutely fantastic. You can see it from the highlights. I mean. I know all three goals came in that first half, but that second half, you could go back and watch it and enjoy every single chance that was was almost a goal. Yeah, in terms of the, both halves gave you different things to latch on to. The first half had all the goals, the second half had all the drama, it had all of those chances to have chances, those half chances of, oh, if I'd have played the right pass there, or if I'd, if I'd have maybe I'd put a challenge in here, it may have changed the, the kind of the complexion of the game. But as it turned out, it was two goals to one. And now we all wait with bated <laughs> breath here to see graphics. We wait to see results. And we wait to see exactly what that meant to the table. Well, regardless of what happens, I will point out that Mariosh hit the woodwork, hit the frame of the goal, not once, but twice in that game. Thundered the bar, if I remember so, rightly. And of course, that, that left hand upright when he was attacking the right hand goal, our, our right hand goal. You just have to wonder if those chances go in and we would be saying at this point in time, yeah, certainly it's Mariosh featuring later on. But we, at this point, we're not too sure. There were plenty of chances, but in the end, it was just about who was going to be the, the man to take the majority of them. That time around, it's Mariosh, Semra, but we, just, we don't know who's through. Well, then there were four. <laughs> the question is, which four are they? And I tell you what, for all of those efforts in that final game, look at your face. Oh. For all of those efforts, it, it did him no good. Oh. Because in the other <laughs> game, Aaron, uh, sorry, Callahards was able to make a comeback in terms of points. And he is the one who has actually I... crept his way into that final <sighs> alongside his Maccabeel, someone who obviously we expected to be there, quite frankly. But look at you, the two of you well, just stunned. We're eh? stunned. We're, we're speechless because we were thinking, oh, this will be a straight shootout between Mariosh and, and John Sweet. But then Callahard says, guys, I'm still in the competition. Yeah, you know hey, that. don't forget about me. It's, eh? goal, different, it's goal difference. It's, it's goal king difference. by the look of things. It looks as though that because he didn't lose by that many to his Maccabeel, that he, oh, there's so many different ways. That, uh, we need a table graphic. That's what we need. We need a table <laughs> graphic. I need to see how this broke down. OK, well, I'm sure they will put it up for us in a moment, but let's just kind of revel in the yeah. other final that we have coming up, at least from mobile, Joe Boy against Air Miki. So that's, that's an intriguing one too, isn't it? I mean, I kind of think, or at least I remember one of you, maybe it was you, Wes. No? Oh, Brushu. Maybe it was you. I think it was you at the beginning of the day. Oh, Brushu, I think, was mine. You were saying you thought yeah. that he was going to be a serious contender, oh, given his pedigree in Brazil, but he's the one who sent packing. And, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, Air Miki has managed to sneak his way in there alongside... Uh, who you said you were going to, you had a funny feeling about today, actually. Yeah, I don't know. Us, us boys, we have to stick together. You know, <laughs> Wonder Boy and Droid Boy, you know, you see a boy in the name, you just you have to <laughs> grab the boy. Fair, fair. Yeah. I'll take that. I'll tell you what, credit to Ermiki, though. I think we saw the, the rematch of, of those two. Well, well, we'll see the rematch, but we saw the first match between Joy Boy and Ermiki earlier. I believe it was 2 1 to Joy Boy. Um, 
very close game from what I remember, Wes, and, and that should be a fun rematch. Yeah, it really should, especially with uh, the slight carrot being that you get to go to Tokyo for the World Finals. It's not bad to it's have on the bad. line in a rematch, is it? <laughs> not bad, not bad at all. Well, let's see if we can uh, have a look then at the final standings for the groups now that those six matches have been done and dusted for console and mobile. Why do I keep saying console? Console and mobile. <laughs> it's like I keep blending the two together and <laughs> I've like created it. a new platform. It's got a bit but of flair about yeah, it. Yeah, nice. there you go. It's yeah. kind of all twain with my accent. Yeah. There you go. Um, right, so I don't know if we have it or not, but... It would be nice to look at it. I agree with you. <laughs> so, anyway. One thing um, we can ascertain from, from the group stages, you can see, of course, is Maccabeal, Joy Boy, the two main mm. winners. But then, then it was wide open in, in the other three spots, aside from the mobile group. Uh, it was pretty much between Eremiki and, and Brujo. But that three-way shootout in that console group stage, I would love to see the final group, group table maybe a bit later on, because honestly, it could have gone we can do way. a recap at some point yeah, if yeah. we can't do it now. I would love that. Yeah. But I think interestingly now is that you can cast aside all of those group games now because it's one game shootouts now. It is all or nothing. You've got one game, potentially extra time penalties. I was going to say, you reckon we're going to get to penalties this time again? I, three times? I, I, time I can almost guarantee that it's going to happen because uh, that's how tight all of these players are playing against one another. 2-1 in the mobile game. It, I believe it was 2-1 for Asmaka Bill against Kalahart in their group game. There are only one goal differences. They're not, and you can only imagine that it's individual mistakes. You can iron those out in a knockout phase. Mm. Anything is possible. We don't have Thomas Muller with us this time. Yeah, I was so, gonna say, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we have no spoilers because he picked both winners last yeah. week in Munich. Uh, he also called a penalty shootout. Yeah. So, uh, hey, I'm going to hold you both to it then. I'm going to hold you to at least one game with a, a penalty shootout. Harry? I'm going to say... Walk me through this one because we're going to start with the mobile final between okay. Joy Boy and Aaron Mickey. Any, any final thoughts that we should know about or anything we should really pay attention to in this particular final based on what we've seen from the two of them so far today? I would say Joy Boy looked more comfortable in that first group okay. game. But as Wes rightly said, the chance to represent this great club in the world finals in Tokyo later this summer is the thing that's being dangled and can add pressure 10 times mm. what would be a usual tournament or knockout stage game. So any of these final four could represent Milan at, at, at Tokyo later this this summer. I honestly couldn't pick either winner. Flip of the coin then. Sadly so. OK, well, listen, two of them undoubtedly will. So let's find out who for the mobile mode of play is going to be headed over to Japan. Then in a few months time, it's between Joy Boy and Air Miki. As we are about to find our third world finalist. We have our world finalist representing Barcelona. We have our world finalist representing Bayern München. Next up, one of these two to represent AC Milan. It is Ermiki from Morocco, the 22-year-old representative from Asia. East Oceania and others going up against Joy Boy, the 25 year old from India, representing the Asia West region. Both fairly new to the e football scene. Aramiki has won local trophies, but really, this stage would be the highest he's reached thus far, I believe I'm right in saying. But the winner of this match at the end of it. The end of the 90 or 120 or the end of the penalty shootout, whichever is necessary, will represent the red side of Milan. It's quite right you say about both these players. For the case of Joy Boy, as we've gone to, to links, talking about how he wanted to just download some play styles and just get used to how other players play eFootball on mobile, and he was very comfortable with that idea. Now you look at the flip side of it with Ermiki, again, locally is uh, very good. Locally very good in Morocco. But again, it's now going to be a case of one of these two, and I say this with respect, novices at this level will go on to represent AC Milan. That's right, folks, AC Milan in Tokyo in the summer. Well, Joy Boy is in the 
classic Milan strip, red and black. Attacking the right-hand goal. And Eremiki will come the other way in the changed white strip. It's always fun when we get to talk about the different levels of competition, Wes, because one of these two will, at the end of the season, have experience at the world level. It won't be regional anymore, it won't be local, it won't be national, it will be international. And of course, experience, we, we speak about it so much, but it really can carry you through some of the more tough games, which is why we have an intriguing mobile final here, because essentially both men at this point in uncharted territory. Yeah, very much so. Again, with this type of stakes on the line, I think also you cast your mind back to uh, Talon's performance in, in Munich. It's very rare that a extra time and penalty shootout is used within the mobile mode as is. So we do get to a penalty shootout. It's maybe some of their first times they've ever taken penalties in the mobile mode. It's even further into uncharted territory. Adley though for Joy Boy and Giroud at the front post. That is a great chance and an even better save. It's a bullet header from Giroud. Went near post as opposed to the far one. Corner taken quickly. Chuck Wazy towards Giroud. Moussa's in there. Danger clear and a potential break now for Eremiki. Benacer can slide through Okafor. Hernandez for company! Eremiki! Turning defence into attack in a flash! The first goal of the mobile final. Scored by the Moroccan. It's 1 0. That is a big goal for the Moroccan. Again. Just clinical, just right place, right time, and again, the right execution. Finding a pass, as we'll see it here again. He knows that Okafor is there. He knows he doesn't have to play the pass straight away. Instead, waits for the defender to get a little bit too close to him, and then plays the ball in for Okafor. And it is Eremiki, who is one goal to the good. Well... We haven't seen too much adversity faced by Joy Boy throughout this club event finals here today. Now is a chance to see if he can put his intentions into practice. We spoke earlier on about him wanting to learn new tricks from the opponents he faces here. As a day-to-day -day software developer, obviously a lot of that is trying to figure out how to fix mistakes. And for Eremiki, it's been a dream start. 1-0 in the opening 25. All the pressure put on his adversary. to Okafor, and Miki looking to try and double his advantage here. The run through just could not be found. So it's like just in the bottom of the screen, you can see there the attacking biases between the two teams. And Miki is on what is all out defence in the game, but it's traditionally called full blue. It basically means you're putting, you're battening down the hatches, you are closing off all avenues, and you're trying to have everybody get back and defend and make yourself a bit more aggressive in the defensive phase of the game. And as such, you can understand that he just wants to see this game out. Well, here comes the pause as the ball is out of play. And you and I as Englishmen, Wes, can obviously know that when you go 1-0 up in a final and your team starts to defend, it can often be to your team's detriment. But Eremiki, like you say, the way he scored his goal was turning defence into attack, so maybe that's where he's, he's trying to exploit the defence of Joy Boy. Yeah, I think so. I think you, you're quite right, is that uh, normally you would potentially call out gamesmanship uh, and things of that nature at this stage. 
but because of how quick the game timer goes down, I could forgive uh, Mickey if he's looking to maybe try and play a bit of game manager already because the game goes that quick. Of course, Joy Boy, as you already said, likes a bug fix or two, likes to try and figure out where the, the, the weaknesses are in things. And we've seen already through the tournament that he's grown into the game and look better and better as games have gone on. Substitution for Milan. He said, though, he needs to Number maybe reserve 21. his best game. Number That's potentially 11. his last game Pulisic. here in the AC Milan Club Coming Finals. Field. Number 14. Number 10. And Mickey trying to attack again with Chuck Wazy following that throw. Half-time rapidly approaching here in this mobile grand final. Long ball looking for Okafor. A tussle between Adley and Benacer. It's Joy Boy who comes away with the ball and look out for Liao, far side. There what can he find in the middle? Double the touch, beats Tamori, goes for goal! And how important could that piece of skill be? To level the play just before half-time. Liao for Joy Boy. No better time to score just before half time it really does change it and again beautiful double touch which again is hard enough to execute on your console let alone with your thumbs and your fingers on a mobile phone again just the perfect angle for it as well just rolls it past the goalkeeper just caught Tamori I think it was hips the wrong way had to pivot and then Although Tamori was in close proximity, just could not spin around quick enough to stick a foot in. And Liao scoring the goal just before half time. That's going to be a real remedy for Joy Boy after conceding around the 25 minute mark. I'll put you on the spot as a, as a gamer here, Harry. If you're a joy boy now, what do you do? Do you stick Do you stick to your game plan and do you twist? More importantly, for Eremiki, do you kind of... <laughs> what do you do? Do you go, OK, I maybe need to get a little bit even more defensive or I need to get back to what I was doing in the first half? It's a very good question, especially because me as a gamer, not the highest skill. But you'd have to imagine that man who's going to come out triumphant in this mobile final will be the one who sticks to their guns and trusts trust the plan trust the process we're on the way in the second half as that's a very dangerous ball as Eremiki's starting this second half of the final attacking left to right it's joy boy from india with the ball now at the feet of Leia. Olivier Giroud back to Liao, and oh, he's got a burst of pace as well! And the finish! What a turnaround! Goals just bookending half time! One before, one after, and Joy Boy now leads this final. That in itself is a perfect example of why Olivier Giroud is so important to your playstyle as AC Milan because gives you that focal point, gives you that ability to, again, use a bit of physicality, get yourself a yard of space, and then able to play a pass in. Again, great work by Joy Boy. And uh, two goals to one. Two goals to one, as you say. And the complexion of this event this season has just been turned on its head. I'll come back to that as... There's a chance here for Edmiki is, I believe, an offside has been called here. It's a rarity in the mobile. I don't think we've had one offside today in the in the mobile version of the game. But again, it just goes to show you how front foot minded these two players are. Well, the, the context of this grand final is evident for everyone to see. But also the context of the season was we, we really don't have that many club events left. We've had Barcelona, we've had Bayern. But if you're any of these players, you want to make sure you're punching your ticket to Tokyo as fast as you can because well, you might be left at the end of musical chairs 
stood on your feet wondering where all the chairs have gone. Indeed, indeed. And, and again, you, you talk about how much time and how much effort. Uh, I know that we had Alex Alcacil here for the uh, Barcelona club finals and he was talking about how much time it takes away from from you know, social Number life, seven. personal life, family life, Number just to get yourself to this level Coming and get yourself field. to this kind of junction, as it were. That imagine having yeah. to do this multiple times throughout the season with getting no luck. Well, confirmation for this match Joy Boy 2, Elmiki 1. Following that 56th minute goal, I believe it was. The man from India. is just about half an hour in game away from securing his place at the finals. That's an early cross towards Tomori. He's not got the most solid head on it. But it is away and a chance maybe for a cross field ball. Benacer for Joy Boy, that's a really nice pass to Giroud, doesn't have that much pace, so... Lays it off to Liao, but that's a strong and important challenge by Calabria. Now El Miki maybe starting to feel the pressure as he's given the ball away, and what a find that is to Loftus-Cheek and Giroud and Liao! Oh, <laughs> how close is that? Those are the types of chances where the, at the end of the game you might come and say, I should have buried that. We only see, we've seen so many games today where there's chances of that should have been tucked away or buried and it just hasn't fallen the way there. And now there's opportunities for Emiki to potentially try and get his way back into this game. Try not to take your eyes off the ball, but do keep one eye on that timer in the top left because we're approaching the 90th minute. Loftus Sheep trying to run through. Inside the final 10 in game minutes, you can see the, the banks of red shirts from midfield to defence, just trying to stay as compact as possible. Round the corner to Liao now for El Miki. Anywhere will do for Joy Boy. Smart interception by Benacer for Joy Boy. And now, oh, that's a, an inviting interception. And there's a chance for Florenzi looking for Giroud, but with two minutes added on. Time is well and truly ticking fast. And I think we have our first representative for Milan. It is Joy Boy wins our mobile final by a margin of two goals to one credit to El Miki that was fight in the Moroccan by taking the lead but the longevity of Joy Boy and the tenacity the sustainability of his play was what's the difference and he will go to Tokyo later this summer as the representative of AC Milan. Yeah, a worthy winner, again, wow. as we said, has, has gradually got better as the games have gone on. And, and again, we said he'd have to save his best game for his final game. And that's where we saw him under, I would say, probably the most duress, mm. is that you've gone 1-0 down in a uh, platform that the time goes quicker. Time was not on your side. You essentially, for lack of a better term, had to beat the clock. Yeah. And beat the clock he did because he managed to get not one goal, managed to get a second as well. And perfectly timed goals they were. Of course, we did see Eremiki take the lead, uh, as we're seeing now. Uh, a really good goal. But then this, uh, you can see in the time, at half time is approaching. We're in stoppage time at the end of the first half. Bags that goal, as you said, changes the complexion of the team talk, the tactic switch. But for me, it's how he was able to so quickly come out in the second half and maintain the pressure he was applying towards the end of the first that got him the reward that in the end saw him go two goals up. You said it perfectly. You said it bookended the half-time team tour, which, again, it, it just took the game away from Emirki because it, it was almost as a, it was the... It was the de almost a delayed one-two sucker punch. It was the... We scored before half-time and we scored just after. 
and then Emiki just couldn't really establish another real opportunity from there. It looked as though if there was going to be another goal scorer in the game, it was actually going to be Joy Boy. <laughs> Very much almost ran the ball into the post uh, at one point uh, with 15 minutes in, uh, left to go in the game. Um, but full credit to Joy Boy. Commiserations, of course, to Emiki. But uh, yeah, India have a representative that's going to represent AC Milan in Tokyo in the summer. And it's fantastic to see. And I have to give credits as well to Joy Boy Semmer on that, that goal. Uh, what a ball from Giroud. I believe it was to Leal. Really perfectly cushioned for him to run onto it. The finish just as good. And I suppose I have to give credit to you as well because your intuition was on point today. Well done, Harry. Thank you. Thank you very much. I yes. suppose that comes from the... Being in the vicinity of someone like Thomas Mueller, we you know, he just he rubbed <laughs> off on you. It's by osmosis that the predictions have just, <laughs> yeah. just we gone did on to you. Hands, As he's so not we'll here you know. today, it means that we he had to have shake to hands. So maybe there was like a <laughs> kind of it. body swap kind of thing going on there. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, I just had a feeling about Joy Boy today. Us boys have to stick together and. I can't wait to see what he can do at the World Finals because what he showed here today is that he can hang with the best mobile players in the world. Well, we did say that perhaps we'd bring joy to the conversation today, not just the conversation, but to the competition, to India as well. And he certainly has delivered on that. So a very big congratulations to the first ever eFootball champion from India. Joy Boy is here with us now. Let's get his thoughts after becoming crown champion of the mobile platform. Joy Boy. Tell us, how does it feel to be the representative of AC Milan at the World Finals? Yeah. Uh, it's really, it's really unbelievable experience to win the finals. Uh, I used to play this game for fun and uh, to relieve the stress in normal times. But from there to winning an esports event, it's a really unbelievable journey. Uh, I learned a lot uh, in past few months, but I'm still not the best and I'll continue to learn and improve. And big thanks to my clan members and uh, some YouTubers who helped me in this journey. And uh, I will continue pushing and improving my game. Well, I tell you what, it's been quite an adventure for you today. You've come back from behind in this final. You dug deep. You managed to do that in quite impressive fashion with two goals in quick succession from Rafael Leal. Tell us about your approach to the grand finale and just how you managed to mount that comeback in the end. I used my usual tactics. Uh, in every match uh, I play, I always wanted to play calm and keep my composure. And I did the same in finals too and uh, it helped me in my win. I really wanted to take a lead as soon as possible. I got a chance in the 18th minute and uh, I tried scoring a header with Giroud. But uh, his goalkeeper Mainan was uh, too good. I missed the corner after that and then from there he made a counter attack which gave him a 1-0 lead. Then I started making offensive changes, uh, pushing my wingers forward. Still, my tactics were not good enough to break his defense. I was a little nervous, but uh, I tried keeping composure. I then made decision to bring Rafael Leo, and then he made very good runs, uh, which helped me in the comeback. I also got a chance in the 74th minute uh, to score with Rafael Leo, but uh, it hit the post. Little dis uh, disappointment there, but. Uh, he could not finish the hat-trick, that was a disappointment. But other than that, uh, he performed really well and uh, it was the best decision in the game. <laughs> well, listen, it's great you were able to keep your composure, to keep your nerves and your emotions in check because obviously it paid off massively for you. So let's talk Tokyo, let's talk your ticket to Japan. Maybe you've had the chance to think about this, maybe you haven't yet. But how do you think you'll go about preparing for the World Finals? I'm really happy that I qualified and I'm really excited for World Finals. You know, like uh, I have a lot of legendary favorite players from AC Milan, especially I love Zlatan. Zlatan is like uh, my idol in football and his mentality and confidence. And to represent such amazing club in finals, it is really an honor for me. And uh, I'll do my best and I still have a lot to learn and uh, I will improve, improve my gameplay better than today. It will be better than uh, today and I will definitely give my 100% in World Finals. I'm really excited for this new experience. Well, there you go. More to come then from Joy Boy. Thank you very much. And again, congratulations. Bravo. Well done. Go out there. Celebrate your big win 
today because you certainly deserve it. Let's find out, though, who's going to be joining him in Japan. We've obviously seen that Harry has been quite on point with his predictions. Where do you want to take a stab at Uzma, the multi-champion over the years versus... Kalahad, someone who is relatively new to the scene here. Ah, do you know, and that's the, that's the that's the, the I'm going to take your fence mm. because you, all of the rule, all of the form book. It's a big fence. It's eh? a massive fence. <laughs> but the the, the, the the form book says that Osmakabeo walks into this final and just cleans house, and Kalahad has absolutely no chance. But to steal the phrase that you used earlier, in a game like this, everybody has a puncher's chance. So. If Kalahad can get ahead early, then anything, again, is possible. But then again, we saw Marios earlier took a goal lead and it was like us Maccabeal just kind of shrugged it off and went, ah, I'm just going to score four. It's all right. <laughs> it's, it's fine. I'll just shrug it off. So it's so close. To My ball. only question mark is how much of the bruise is still there from losing at the, the Barcelona club finals mm. for us That is a very good point to mention. We'll see if yes. we can shake it off. Okay, so this is the second time that he's reached the finals out of three club events that we've had so far. It will be very interesting indeed to see how it was Maccabeal pulls through or doesn't because maybe Kalahad will make it hard for him. Nonetheless, it is the grand finale for the console mode of play. Do enjoy it. Multi-champion Uz Maccabeal against Kalahad. Console final is just moments away. Ozmakabil. If you know eFootball esports, you know the name. Goes up against Kalahard, a newcomer to the eFootball esports scene, Wes. I know he streams quite a lot, but this is a very, very tricky task he has ahead of him. Going up against a three time world champion yeah as arenas go it's very different from being uh on your couch or in your gamer chair with your setup and with your followers or your chat that are uh, kind of behind you uh, that is one thing it's a very different thing when you're uh, against uh, essentially the e-football boogeyman that is us Bill, three times world champion three times e-football pro champion knows a thing or two about winning titles, knows a thing or two about winning knockout games. Again, for Kalahad to come through this, he's going to need his absolute A-plus game here. That he is. We are underway in the final. Who's Maccabeal taking on Kalahad? And Chuck Wazy here. Going to start the game off very strongly, getting to the byline, and Liao's almost able to get ahead to it, but will just bounce behind for a goal kick. And I'll tell you why I'd bring up that Barcelona bruise, if it were, Wes. We speak so much about Luz Maccabeal in these knockout competitions, his accolades he's got. He will always eat up those group stage results. That's his bread and butter, but, well, I'll come back to it as there's a real chance here. And still not cleared, actually. I believe this is as Maccabeal we're watching in the changed white strip. We'll get confirmation of that, but... The group stages are easy for his Maccabeal. He doesn't face adversity in those types of situations. It tends to be in the close knockout games, the penalty shootouts, where sometimes it just doesn't go his way. There's a real chance here, though. And it looks like there's going to be a strike away, but... Well, pressure still on. I just wonder how much of that Barcelona club event a few months ago will be still playing on the mind of the three-time old champ. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, it's... Knowing as Maccabeal and the way that we have seen over the years is that defeats, it's not too bothered in the sense of he doesn't really leave that much of a marker on him. It, it almost just adds a bit of fuel to the fire for him to come back and try and do even better. So it is no surprise to see that he's got walked through a group stage undefeated and now he's in a 
uh, a final once again. So it'll just be a case of how he navigates this, as we said, one game shootout between these two teams. Benesir is dispossessed and just getting confirmation. Looks like it is Callahard in the all white chain strip. Going up against those Maccabeel, no stranger to iterations of this competition and even going as far back as Pez League. You name it, he's won most of it. But the thing that's eluded him thus far in the season is a club event final win. Can he do what he aimed to do in Barcelona here for AC Milan? And can Callahard really upset the odds? Has some defending to do and so far has looked pretty darn good. Yeah, and also it is an interesting one to see here whether it's South Americans that might be the undoing of us, Maccabeel, if it would be the second final against South American opposition. And it'll just be a case of whether he can overcome it and get over that final hurdle this season. Of course, as you mentioned, we've seen it time and again in co-op, in 1v1, in Pez leagues, in eFootball. We've seen it across the board that he's able to produce performances that will blow away oppositions. As you say, a really good ball into Chukwesi. Well, he's blown away the defence. Chukwesi, as you say, looking for Giroud. Maybe along the floor, not the optimal option for the big Frenchman. Callahard, of course, the 30-year-old from Mexico, the America's regional winner. Defensively has weathered a lot of the early storms that Osmakabil typically brings to games such as these. You just get the sense that with both players knowing what's at stake with the apprehension of Osmakabil. I'll come back to that as he's got defending to do. There's a stunning strike queued up by Callahard. With the apprehension of, of ghosts of club events past for Osmakabil being just one game away from finally punching that ticket. But also Callahard knowing the calibre of his opponent. You just wonder whether or not the two might cancel each other out here and nerves might not bring the best out of our two competitors here in the console final. It's not to mention as well that Callahard is not a uh, scrub, for lack of a better term. He's no easy gimme game to play against. This is a high-caliber individual that, through Dream Team, is always highly ranked within that online mode. And as you said, though, the, the battles to go in this mode, it's a lot different than with Dream Team because you have to get used to the players that you're playing with. You have to go through three or four rounds just to get to this opportunity. So, uh, again, a, a massive credit to Galahad to get to this level. It's Maccabeel on the charge, again, over that far side, looking for the overload, it seems, with Chuck Wesley. There's been a couple of attacks where he's been free, but you're right, Galahad has proven his worth up to this point. All eight of our club finalists have certainly done so. It is this Maccabeel nil, Callahard nil for now. It's Maccabeel charging with Liao. With half time approaching. Well, you would say. Again, with all due respect to Callahard, like you said, no slouch, but as Maccabeel is one of those. Esports, Mount, Mount Rushmore type players as the referee's assistant holds up the number one. So just one minute added on. Callahard coming in here with the header! Off the frame of the goal! Who else but Uzbek Abil's favourite player comes back to bite him and puts Callahard in front against the three-time world champion. It's not just as Maccabeel's favourite player, it's mine from this AC Milan setup. Again, it's really smart play here in this juncture. He gets it around the defender for one, but it's this point here. He could easily try and cut it back on the deck or on the floor into 
I believe, let me just double check who that is. Is Chuck Wesey there? I think you're looking at there, potentially a cut back into, I think that would have been Musa. But it, the, the smart play is to actually cut it back on a cross and leave it to Giroud, who is penalty spot and there's no one around him and he's able to just direct the head of wherever he wants to finds it off the frame of the goal into the back of the net and Callahard goes in with as you would say from the form book a surprise one the lead hit one more thing to throw in there as well the separator which we were all begging for to find out what that was it was on goals scored between Callahard and John Sui it was Level goal difference, level points. Wow. Went to goals scored, and it was a solitary goal. And again, quiz question out there for who he got the one goal against. The man in the final here was Maccabeal. That last game where he got that one goal proved vital for Kalahari. And now he's 45 in-game minutes away, at a minimum, from potentially taking this game and taking a ticket to Tokyo in the summer. going to take a moment and absorb all of that information as well as the information I think shocked me most second half on the way but we saw the stats as Maccabeal just one strike on goal and it was not on target very uncharacteristic he will be attacking from right to left in possession now with Benesset but I think that's a worrying Statistics sheet if you are a fan of Osmakabil. Good dummy there by Callard. Absolutely far side. In the turn inside Benesser with the double touch. That was a good piece of intervention. And much needed. Sets Osmakabil. Off on his merry way. Out for a throw in, but that's the one thing Osmakabil does have on his side is that big game experience, big tournament experience knowing when to stick, when to twist. And for Giroud, he's just been muscled off the ball there. Musa with the back heel, Giroud follows suit. Benesset for Rizmakabil, trailing 1-0 in this final. Trukawezi. Giroud inside the box looking to repay the favour. How tight it's been and... Well, that's a nice cross and headed down! Oh, it's off the post and across the face of goal! I was about to say with how close it's been, you'd have to say there's not too many chances left in this second half, but... Well, what do I know? Kalahar just a few inches away from doubling his advantage. That header seems to be where, where Kalahar is finding a lot of his success, almost scoring again there with the cross. Yeah, absolutely. It seems to be that almost a go-to move to utilise that physicality of AC Milan. And again, on another day, it clinks off the post and goes in, most like it did in the first half. On that occasion, it clinks off the bar, off the uh, off the post, rolls across, and there's no one there to put it home for Galahad. And again, on the flip side of giving Usman Kabil chances, he can't really spurn any chances either against him because again, we've seen the attacking capability that he has at his disposal. Just have to look back at that group stage game against Marios. We saw the young Greek. And I think he hit the frame of the goal twice and scored two goals in that game. But it was his Maccabeal who came out guns blazing. Pulisic. just trying to make something happen on this new side but we've ticked over now into the 70th minute of the game and well the players have answered the question I was about to ask Wes at what point do you make those switches if you are with Maccabeal I can almost 
see him. I know the studio is empty and it's just in it, us in it for now, but I can almost hear the voice of Usman Kabil in my head bemoaning things that could have gone his way in the game but haven't so far. It's now or never for our multiple-time world champion, multiple-time eFootball Pro champion. Back heel to lay out. Adley, far side. Can't beat the first man with his cross, but will win a corner. Headed towards, excuse me, cross towards the near post, looking for a header. Callahard well matched. And now, well, not for Teo Hernandez. You may have seen a Callahard break, but Giroud with that back heel. Vital intervention. Pulisic has stayed up here on the left hand side. Giroud inside the box for his Macabeel. Just can't get it under his spell. And now Callahard, what can he produce with the through ball? Benesser tussling. But I think it's Leal who will win. And who's this on the far side? Callahard is dispossessed. In swinging corner to come on the near side, you'd assume. Under 15 in game minutes remain. We do have extra time and penalties on the table if we can see an equaliser. It's a big pause for both these players. We, we hasten to say it all the time is that they, it's almost like the butterfly effect is that any of these changes could result in a goal or a goal being conceded. One back here near side for Kalahad. Worrying for his Macabeel, he's not got too much possession going his way in the final five or ten or so in game minutes. And what a foul there has Kalahad. He has indeed thrown out against Tamori. Oh, I thought he had been given the wrong with the, the uh, Kalahad's way instead. It's it Macabeel's. How important could that be? Ten in game minutes to go. I like you, Wes, saw it go the other way. And look at this, Kalu Kalulu far side. Uzmakabil. It's now or never. Towards Okafor. And the angle just never sat right with him. It's the wrong player on the header that you'd want. You'd want Giroud in that type of neck of the woods. Okafor, yes, he's fairly decent in the air, but he's not Olivier Giroud. Uzmakabil trying to turn the screw now. Okafor back to Leia with the header. I wonder if that was a pass, actually. Seeing the man nearest the goal towards the far post, either way. This has been a much better spell of possession from this Maccabeel and an unforced error, you would argue. He wins this Maccabeel a corner. Okay, not the type of player you want to be giving that to. Especially at this time of the game. This is how important holding on is for Kalahar. Just shifting players, making sure they're staying tight, staying compact. knows how deadly his opponent can be. He does not want to gift any chances. The other way. And here we go. There's Maccabeel's corner. Towards Giroud, but straight at Magnan. Don't be deceived, we're approaching the 90th minute, but something tells me we might have a couple of minutes added on. And with no one up there for Callahad. 
Thomas McAbill will receive possession again. Okafor, really nice back heel. It's handed that far side. Back to Okafor. Can he get inside? That's defensive intervention from Callahard and now he's galloping the other way it's only Tamori for company here and look at that clock now we can start to see how important these passes and territory and possession is Ozmakabil with the ball now on the brink of elimination Liao near side can't find Loftus Sheik and Ozmakabil wow. will be bested it is Callahard the champion from Mexico, representing AC Milan in Tokyo later this summer. David versus Goliath, and David wins. David smites Goliath in this. What I can only describe it as it was one moment that defined that game, and we'll see it again in the highlights. It was that header on any other day that hits the post and goes wide, or as we saw in the second half header, it hits the post and goes across the, the, the goal mouth. In that occasion, ricochets off the post and hits the back of the net. Well, we can take a look at some of the highlights, Wes. I know they, they cut to us and I was shocked. This is <laughs> no disrespect at all to, to Callahard, but the fact we've seen Uzmak Abil qualify for two finals this season, I did not expect in a million years he would lose two out of those two. That is unprecedented from that caliber of player. But Callahard just had something about him today. Had those finishes he needed. And what a final and what a result for, for Mexico and for Callahard. Just unbelievable from the 30-year-old. A deserving champion. Yeah, to come through the, the as we said, the, the kind of almost maelstrom that was the, the console group stage, yeah. as it was, in terms of getting qualification through on goals scored not even goal difference it was goals scored that was the separator to then get into the final with a player that's not dropped any points in the group stage has the legacy and the kind of the back catalogue of titles to go in and essentially do a job because he got his goal and then you noticed as that second half started to wear on any time that it was defensively you know, it came at his defence. It was long ball forward to Giroud and just buy some time. Get it, keep it in the confines of the pitch. The clock will continue to tick and it puts more pressure onto Uzma Kabil, who couldn't overcome that pressure, which again is a surprise to both me and you. Yeah, it's a surprise because Uzma Kabil, again, we were used to him winning, but defensively, Callahard well and truly at the races today, Semra, an unbelievable for performance to hold on to that lead I mean score to get the lead <laughs> but then hang on to it against a player of his opponent's caliber yeah with that type of performance AC Milan have a very strong champion hey listen the wild card for the win we wanted to see the unexpected happen so it did and we actually can now cross over to speak with Kalahard our new champion who's going to be representing AC Milan in a few months time in Japan Kalahard tell me how are you feeling right now you must be absolutely overjoyed La verdad estoy muy emocionado estoy contento por haber ganado este torneo eh, el Milan ha sido uno de mis equipos favoritos durante toda la vida que, que recuerdo y bueno espero poder demostrarlo más adelante y bueno estoy emocionadísimo contento y bueno a ver qué sale qué sale después he says he's very happy he's very excited obviously this is a very big deal for him and something that he's wanted to do for a very long time he hopes that he can continue in this vein going forward and that of course there's still more to come from him but overall he's feeling very very happy indeed and um, so tell me then just how you managed to do this because we are talking about a hugely difficult opponent that not many people get the chance to actually defeat but you did it with a clean sheet to boot with a beautiful goal from Giroud Tell me about this process in terms of how you went into the final, your preparation, and how you actually managed to win in the end. La verdad es que fue un partido bastante complicado. Este, el hecho de meter eh, un gol o meter ese centro con con Chubuese para que rematara Giroud, este, la verdad es que le cabeció espectacular. No sabía <laughs> eh, cómo la había pegado tan fuerte, pero este, esto de, de, de mantener el, el resultado fue es complicado. Jugarle a un multicampeón es muy difícil. Ha sido una inspiración para mí durante mucho tiempo, pero ahora jugar y ganarle creo que eh, conlleva gran mérito y pues bueno, la verdad es que sí fue, sí fue difícil 
eh, eh, ganar este eh, contra contra Osma Kabay. He said that there is a lot of merit in beating someone of the ilk that Uzmakabil is the champion and he's absolutely right. He definitely does deserve a lot of merit for it. But he also spoke to how complicated the game actually was and he was quite pleased with how Tukwiza was able to make that cross into the box for Jiru to uh, perform a spectacular header to actually get that goal. But then beyond that, to actually continue to defend the lead, he said, was very, very complicated and very difficult. But in the end, he uh, managed to get past someone who has been an inspiration to him for a very, very long time and who has taken him to the likes of today now champion. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Um, Kalahad, what is it that we can expect from you whenever you go to Japan? How do you think you'll approach the preparation when it comes to the World Finals? Tengo muchísimas ganas de ir al torneo. La verdad es que estoy súper emocionado. Me va a costar un poquito trabajo eh, practicar, sobre todo porque hay gente que no... Eh, bueno, necesito checar con grandes competidores que han participado anteriormente o con amigos para poder agarrar ese mismo nivel, sobre todo con el equipo. No estoy muy familiarizado todavía con, con el estilo con el que se juega con el equipo, pero mientras más práctica mejor. Sé que en julio va a ser un, un torneo mucho más difícil, más exigente, pero este, espero poder adaptarme lo mejor posible y, y sacarle el máximo provecho a todos los jugadores para poder ganar or para intentar ganar el título. <laughs> so he says he knows and understands that the competition in July is going to be much more difficult than it has been up until now. And obviously he's going to do everything that he possibly can to go on and to win it. But he still has to get more familiarized with AC Milan, with the team itself, with the players, and to the style of play. He needs to adapt a little bit more. So he's going to be looking for people he can practice with which he says might be a little bit difficult, but he does have to look for people who have been in these scenarios before, who have competed at this level, who can help him to get ready, or maybe just play with friends as well. But nonetheless, he's going to do what he can to make sure that he brings his A-game when we see him in Japan. And as you guys said, by the way, muchas gracias, por cierto. <laughs> Thank you very much, Callahan, and congratulations once more. Go and enjoy your big victory. And we'll see you very soon uh, in Japan on the other side of the world. And it's, it's going to be absolutely sublime when we get there. I mean, we've had some fantastic winners so far over these past few weeks. We have, and, and when he talks about training partners, of course, back in Barcelona, we had two from his same region, the Americas, qualify for both mobile and console. So he'll have at least one practice partner, I'd imagine. But yeah, an incredible tournament. One thing we've barely had a chance to touch, touch on really is, is the type of in-game items available. Obviously, the big mm. time Giroud coming into play there for... Coming up for big Kalahad. time. Big time, like you say. <laughs> I mean, that's the type of toys these guys have to yeah. play with. I want to call Big them toys because well, 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 to in the other one. I, def exactly. I definitely call them weapons because yeah. that, that's essentially <laughs> what you can do. You can do as much damage to your opponent as you can. We saw Leo, we saw Giroud, we saw uh, Tamori as well having a, a big time card in there. They're, they're all at weapons that they have at their disposal and again it's just about how you implement them. So I can appreciate Kalahad's almost plea for some people to come and play against him because once you do get qualified for an event like you know as, as we've seen in the world finals you're going to need those sparring partners because mm. it's one thing playing dream team and playing the mode that we have seen for quite a few years now it's a very different thing coming into a set rules and regulations where you've got only these players to play against it's a very different prospect and something you, you really have to prepare for it's not something you can just kind of pick up and just play you have to have some months behind you to practice. Okay, well, there you have it. It's a wrap when it comes to the AC Milan finals, but there's still plenty more to come. We have, for example, Arsenal, Manchester United uh, just around the corner. So make sure that you stay up to date about those particular competitions, about eFootball, all across our platforms and our social media as well. But guys, I just want to give you the opportunity to say any final thoughts that you may have after yet another brilliant day. I know I say it, but it is the truth, quite it, frankly. It's honestly always a joy uh, commentating these clubs finals i will say though we're getting down now to the stage of the season where the spots in the musical chairs where they're starting to run out so we're going to see players start to scramble to qualify which means we'll see more desperate play and more goals so make sure you tune into the the future club events because it's going to be even more drama yeah to echo that the sands of time are falling by the wayside you are running out of time to get your ticket to tokyo in the summer there is not that many events left, as you mentioned, Arsenal, Manchester United on the deck coming soon. 
Make sure that you're involved, folks, because you are get you. There's not that many spots left. There really isn't. You are running out of time. Please qualify. You need to qualify. It I feel like we should arms. have one of those. What do you call them? The like the old school timers with the yeah. Sand. We need like a countdown clock behind kind of us. Right. Yeah, yeah it's a really big one because you two love to talk about that. <laughs> so um, certainly the pressure is on, isn't it? Well, thank you to everyone for being here with us, to all of our finalists, to Konami Taisi Milan, to the whole team here as well. We really appreciate uh, you all being here with us once more. It really has been so fabulous and such a pleasure to bring you yet another competition. We'll see you very soon indeed. Another congratulations to Joy Boy and to Callahan's. And until next time, arrivederci. 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 <laughs>